Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. I want to welcome all of you who are tuning in from around the world for this uh, beautiful event that is taking place right now, Remembering Badr, Remembering Badr. And we have, mashallah, nine speakers uh, joining us today. Masha'Allah for this program, and I hope that your family is gathered around uh, to watch this program, inshallah. Um, we are about to get started here. We want to encourage you all to invite your friends, invite your family, invite your relatives to tune in right now on YouTube to this program, inshallah. They can go to the link that you see there on the screen. It is celebratemercy.com slash better celebratemercy.com slash better. That is the, the, the link you see right here on your screen, celebratemercy.com slash better. Um, my name is Tariq Al-Masidi. I am the founding director of Celebrate Mercy, and you're joined here by other team members at Celebrate Mercy as well uh, for this program. And we hope that, inshallah, everything goes smoothly and that you benefit from it. Inshallah, we have a packed program today. Um, with beautiful lessons, beautiful recitations, um, beautiful reminders. Um, we even are going to be uh, giving away an Umrah trip later in the program as well to some of those who qualified in the last contest. We'll tell you also about our next contest coming up. And we also, um, inshallah, will be uh, having a recitation at the end of the program of a dua for all of the uh, 300 plus companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu who were at Badr. Um, so we have a really, really beautiful program coming up for you, inshallah, for uh, all those who are watching. Right now, I'm looking at my screen. I see that we have over 100 uh, computers and phones and tablets connected. Uh, now it's 120 uh, people who are tuning in on their laptops, phones and tablets, families as well. Uh, inshallah, that number will grow. Uh, we just need you all to help share this Live Now flyer and this Live Now link uh, with your friends. Um, tune in because I think this is not only going to be a story today. This is not only going to be a story that many of us have heard, um, but it's going to also talk about the lessons from this story for us. Why does the Battle of Badr matter for us today? What lessons can we learn for it today? Uh, how can it impact my day-to-day -day life today, inshallah? And I think you all will really benefit, not just from the knowledge being shared, the stories, the visuals, but inshallah, the lessons that we learn from it as well. And there's so much barakah in just saying the names of those who were at Badr. These are uh, some of the most beloved uh, human beings to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just mentioning their names uh, allows for mercy to descend. Inshallah. So I'm now seeing we have about 150 devices connected to this program right now, which is really, really great to see. And today's program is being brought to you by Celebrate Mercy. We are now a 12 year old organization, nonprofit organization based in the United States, but with an impact that is global. Alhamdulillah. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization and our mission is to teach about the life and character of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we do that through our webinars social media events trips and campaigns so we say that we teach about the prophet sallallahu through our words and our actions meaning our programs and our campaigns alhamdulillah and since covid-19 specifically we have done all of our programs online we shifted everything to be an online uh, online programming be, due to the global pandemic. Although we recently have restarted our Umrah trips and we recently took a group uh, to Jerusalem, Mecca and Medina just about one month ago, Alhamdulillah. But this is a summary of everything we've done since COVID, Alhamdulillah. The main numbers to, to, to think about are the fact that in about 750 days, in about two years, we have brought you over a thousand hours of programs, a thousand hours of programs. That means more than an hour a day of new programming on average since COVID-19 began, especially here in the United States. And that's 500, that's among 520 webinars, 520 webinars 
in 750 days. So it's, it's about a, one webinar every 36 hours. And we hope that, inshallah, you will keep this in mind when you're considering which organizations you want to support in Ramadan, uh, where, where the donations are having the most impact because of your generosity in the past we have been able to really ramp up our programming. We've expanded our team and we've been bringing you content that inshallah touches your heart and helps you to learn more about the life and the character of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu We have been hard at work, but we do need your help inshallah in Ramadan to hit our fundraising goal. This is our main fundraising season. So we'll talk about that a little bit later, about what we're raising money for, how much we're trying to raise as well. And we also have a hashtag for today's webinar. We're about to get started with the first speaker. And what we do want to share the hashtag because if you find, a, if you hear a beautiful quote or, you, or there's a beautiful clip that you want to post on your Instagram story, uh, then use this hashtag and tag Celebrate Mercy. And if you tag Celebrate Mercy and you use the hashtag and you're quoting a speaker or perhaps you want to share a picture of your family watching the webinar and, and make sure we can see the webinar in the picture when you when you share it we are going to enter all of you who are using the hashtag in your posts into a raffle to win some big prizes at the end of this webinar so if you're posting about this webinar on social media please use this hashtag please tag celebrate mercy try to share some beautiful quotes from the speakers some clips and encourage people to tune in inshallah right now i'm seeing we're at 200 uh, devices connected, about 200 devices connected right now, mashallah. And these are just examples of people that have uh, tweeted recently uh, using these uh, these hashtags as well. These are some examples, one person showing their cat watching the webinar. Um, but these are examples of things you can tweet. You can tweet a beautiful quote as well by the teachers. So make sure to do that. And again, Take a moment now, take out your phone and encourage your friends to join us, inshallah, for this program. Um, one thing I wanted to share also is that the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, and I, I think I can find this hadith here um, as well, bismillah. The pro oh, actually, okay, maybe not, but I'll just say what the hadith is. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that whoever encourages someone to do a good deed is as the one who did it. So you're watching this webinar, inshallah, you're going to benefit, you'll get the barakah from it, you'll get the reward of joining and learning, inshallah, about our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But you can also get the blessings and the reward of multiple people tuning in. So you can get rewarded tenfold uh, if you can get 10 people to join us today, inshallah. For every person that joins because you encourage them to, you will get some of that blessing in this beautiful uh, day or night of Ramadan, whatever you're in. For some of you, this is even the 17th night of Ramadan. For some of you, it is your 17th night of Ramadan. And that is the night of Badr. That is the night when the Muslim uh, army was camped out overnight preparing uh, for the battle the next morning, uh, subhanAllah. So the 17th of Ramadan uh, for some of you is right now, is right now. And the 17th of Ramadan is the day of Badr. That is the day of Badr. And that's why we're doing this program today. And it just happens to be a Sunday. So many of you hopefully are available to watch and, and benefit from the program. Uh, Alhamdulillah. So take a moment as you're watching on YouTube and please click on the like button, the th thumbs up. This is another great way to share the video. And I hope you all can subscribe to our channel while you are tuning in so you don't miss any future live streams or, or, or videos that we post uh, inshallah. I'm going to now introduce uh, our beautiful teacher, Sheikh Ismail Isa, who will be reciting some verses from the Quran as we get started here. Uh, mashallah. Um, we now have about 220 devices connected uh, and the numbers keep growing. But let's go ahead and bring uh, Sheikh Ismail to the stage. He is the founder and director of Tartil Academy at MCGP, which is an amazing uh, community, the Muslim Center of Greater Princeton. He's an Al-Azhar graduate with a specialization in Quranic sciences and the 10 modes of recitations, the 10 qira'at. He has many ijazat for both reciting and teaching the Quran in all 10 of its modes. And he has taught tajweed, qira'at, and Quranic sciences in multiple countries, previously served as the Tarawih Imam and Director of Quran Studies at the Islamic Center of, uh, 
Islamic Society of Central Jersey. And we encourage you to learn more about Tartil Academy and their online classes on the website at themuslimcenter.org slash Tartil. And we'll share that link in the comments as well. Uh, Sheikh Ismail, it's great to have you with us to kick off this uh, webinar. And inshallah, the, uh, the stage is now yours. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Qad kana lakum ayatun fi fi'atayn iltaqata Fi'atun tuqatilu fi sabilillahi wa ukhra kafiratun yarawnahum mislayhim ra'iyal ayin Wallahu yu'ayyidu binasrihi man yasha Inna fi thalika la'ibaratan li ulil adhsar Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wa laqad nasarakum Allahu bibadrin Wa antum adhillatum Fattaku Allaha la'allakum tashkurun إذ تقول للمؤمنين ألن يكفيكم أن يمدكم ربكم بثلاثة آلاف من الملائكة منزلين بلى إن تصبروا وتتقوا ويأتوكم من فورهم هذا يمددكم ربكم يمددكم ربكم بخمسة آلاف من الملائكة مسومين وما جعله الله إلا بشرى لكم ولتطمئن قلوبكم وما النصر إلا من عند الله وما النصر إلا من عند الله العزيز الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كما أخرجك ربك من بيتك بالحق وإن فريقا من المؤمنين لكارهون يجادلونك في الحق بعدما تبينك أنما يساقون إلى الموت وهم ينظرون وإذ يعدكم الله إحدى طائفتين أنها لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم ويريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المجرمون إذ تستغيثون ربكم إذ تستغيثون ربكم فاستجاب لكم أني ممدكم بألف من الملائكة مغدفين وما جعله الله إلا بشرى ولتطمئن به قلوبكم 
ومن نصر إلا من عند الله إن الله عزيز حكيم إذ يغشيكم النعاس أمنة منه وينزل عليكم من السماء ماء ليطهركم به وينزل عليكم من السماء ماء ليطهركم به ويذهب عنكم ويذهب عنكم رجز الشيطان وليربط على قلوبكم ويسد بتابه الأقدام صدق الله العظيم Jazakum Allah khair to Sheikh Ismail Isa for that beautiful, beautiful opening recitation of the Quran. MashaAllah. And um, I just want to share some of the uh, comments we're getting. Um, we would love to ask the audience who is tuning in right now um, where you are uh, joining from. Where are you tuning in from? Who are you watching the program with? Are you watching with your uh, family, uh, with your spouse, um, with your friends? Um, tell us your city, state, country that you are joining in from, inshallah. Um, and we would love to share some of your comments, um, especially if you are tuning in from outside of the United States. Let us know the city, state, country. We like to see just how far people are uh, are from where we're broadcasting it, mashallah, uh, inshallah. So um, we can share, inshallah, some of those comments. Uh, I see uh, Aisha saying that she's tuning in from Chicago. And let us know, is this your first time joining Celebrate Mercy? Is this your first time joining Celebrate Mercy? And who are you watching with? Where are you tuning in from, inshallah? Toronto, Canada, okay? Mashallah. Where else are you all joining from? Vancouver, Canada. Roswell, Georgia. Fairfax, Virginia. I see someone here joining from Pakistan. MashaAllah. Sister Aisha joining from the UK. That's great. That's great. With their family. MashaAllah. Singapore. Great. MashaAllah. And we now have, uh, okay, someone here from Mauritius. Someone here joining us from Mauritius. MashaAllah. So we have multiple continents. Okay, look at this, from Kyoto, Japan. It's Sahur time here and praying for you. May Allah make this EV, uh, heavy on your mizan, mashallah. I see South Africa as well, Aruba, mashallah. Very, very uh, diverse audience. And look at this place. People don't know that this is actually a city in the United States, but it is. Holy Islamburg, New York, Holy Islamburg, New York. Did anyone know that there's an Islamburg in the in the United States? There is, mashallah, a great community there in holy Islamburg, New York, mashallah. So it's great to see where everyone is coming in from and tuning in from, mashallah, who they're watching with. You can continue to let us know in the chat where you are joining from, inshallah. It's great to see that we have now over 300 devices connected. And again, we want to encourage you all to uh, let your friends know that they can join us. Um, and the link that you see scrolling on the bottom of your screen is what you can share with your friends. CelebrateMercy.com slash Badr. That's CelebrateMercy.com slash Badr, inshallah. Um, and as we said before, as you're posting about the program, please use this hashtag. This hashtag is CM Badr. That is CM Badr, inshallah. And we, if you use this hashtag and you tag Celebrate Mercy, when you're posting about the program, uh, like you post, for example, a quote by one of the teachers or a picture 
of your family watching the program, inshallah, then we will put your name in a raffle and we are going to choose we're going to choose families to win some big prizes at the end of this program, inshallah. We also are going to be choosing someone to win an Umrah trip a little bit later, uh, uh, people who qualified for that Umrah trip contest a little bit later in the program. So someone today is going to be winning an Umrah trip as well, which is a big deal, alhamdulillah, a big deal. So um, I see people continuing to share, mashallah, uh, where they're tuning in from. I see Sister Lena here. She's a regular on our programs. MashaAllah, that's excellent. So continue to let us know in the chat where you're joining from, how you're liking the program so far, you know, some of your favorite quotes, your favorite teachers, let us know. Let us know, inshallah. Um, so, and don't forget to press on that like button and subscribe as you're watching as well, uh, inshallah. Um, we also want to just thank our webinar sponsors. We have uh, a few webinar sponsors who helped sponsor today's webinar, and some of them are sponsoring multiple webinars today. Um, and we're going to share a couple of them now and a couple of them later. One of them is Fatima Martin, and she wanted us to make a du'a for her. She asked, please make, please ask Allah that he may grant healing to Sister Fatima's father and all her family members, a complete healing of bodies, hearts, and souls. So please, everyone say ameen to this du'a, inshallah. Um, and another sponsor here as well, um, who said, may Allah protect the Palestinian people. This was someone who wanted their name to remain anonymous. May Allah protect the Palestinian people and Al-Aqsa Mosque from any harm. May Allah protect all oppressed people and restore the Muslim Ummah as a source of light, guidance, peace, and protection. Everyone say ameen. Everyone type in ameen to these beautiful du'as, inshallah. And we want to encourage you all, if you can, to consider sponsoring a day of webinars. This is a really big way to support Celebrate Mercy. Just send us an email if you are interested, inshallah, in helping cover some of the costs of these programs. It's a way to offset our expenses and make Ramadan easier on Celebrate Mercy so that we can hit our fundraising goals as well. So email us and then we will share your du'a request on all of those webinars at least twice during the webinar, inshallah. So thank you to these webinar sponsors. Uh, inshallah, and please email us again at info at celebratemercy.com and we can send you information on how you can be a sponsor. Maybe maybe you'll be interested in your family sponsoring the 20th night or the 21st day or a full day of webinars. We're doing four webinars every day in Ramadan, four webinars every day. And you can even sponsor it on behalf of a loved one who has passed away. Maybe you sponsor it with a dua for someone who's passed away, like a parent or a grandparent or a great grandparent or a friend, inshallah. So this could be a beautiful ongoing charity, Sadaqa Jariyah, because thousands of people watch these videos. Thousands of people will be saying ameen to your dua, inshallah. I'm now going to go ahead and introduce our first speaker, and that is uh, Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda. And he is going to be giving us some background uh, into the Battle of Badr before we actually get into the, the actual battle itself. He's going to put this into a great a beautiful context for all of us, inshallah. And Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda, I'm going to introduce him right now, and then we'll, uh, inshallah, um, bring him to the stage. Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda is the founder, director, and instructor at the Qalam Institute. Um, he annually uh, teaches at the Sira Intensive, and at while teaching at the Qalam Seminary, he travels around the country teaching classes, giving seminars and lectures. He was born and raised in Texas, and resides there with his wife and three children. He memorized the Quran in Karachi, Pakistan at an early age, and he graduated from the rigorous Alim program in 2001 at the top of his class. He has a bachelor's and master's in Arabic from Karachi University while completing a master's in Islamic studies from the University of Sindh. And after he returned home to Texas, he taught Islamic studies uh, in Arabic at the University of Texas, and worked with various Islamic schools and served as an imam at the Kaliville Masjid in the Dallas area, mashallah. And shortly before this program, we received um, a pre-recorded uh, message from Sheikh Abdel Nasser with his talk. So we're going to go ahead and bring that uh, video here to the stage of Sheikh Abdel Nasser's talk for uh, this webinar, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. 
the Battle of Badr, moment in the life of the Prophet but in order to be able to understand and appreciate exactly what that moment meant one has to understand exactly the background how we got there and everything that had transpired up until that point in fact um, not to digress from the topic but many times people even have a question about the decision, the initial decision about going and intercepting the caravan, that why and how was that decision made? And the answer to that question is found in understanding and appreciating the 15 years that led up to that event and that moment. Particularly amongst those 15 years of prophethood that led up to that moment are the first 13 years in Mecca. So let's try to understand exactly what transpired in those first 13 years of prophethood, the message in the city of Mecca. When the Prophet ﷺ first received revelation, Iqra' bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq, in the cave of Hira at Jabal Nur. After that, the Prophet ﷺ, basically the weight of the world was put on his shoulders. And he had the responsibility of taking this message to humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further instructed the Prophet that stand up and warn the people and proclaim the greatness of your Lord. And warn the closest of your family members. So the Prophet وسلم, for the first three years of prophethood, the da'wah, the call to Islam, was largely what we would call private. And the scholars explained the wisdom in that, that the wisdom was to help build a nucleus and a core around the Prophet that embodied his family, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, his children, Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu and others. But then also to bring in to the fold his close friends and confidants, people that he could rely upon and depend upon, and people that would participate and share in his cause and his mission. People like Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And after those three years, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to now take the message public to the entire community of Mecca and Quraysh. And that was that really, you know, a powerful moment where the Prophet ﷺ stood on the mountain of Safa and he addressed them, all the tribes and all the families by naming them. And then the Prophet ﷺ said that if I was to tell you that there is an army on the other side of the mountain approaching to attack you, what would be your reaction? What would be your response? And they all responded in unison saying that we would believe you and we would be concerned and we would prepare. And that's when the Prophet ﷺ said that I warn you of the life of the hereafter and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that awaits there, the judgment from Allah that awaits if you do not believe in Allah and accept this message. And that's when none other than his own uncle his direct uncle, his father's brother, Abu Lahab, spoke up and was very rude to the Prophet. He cursed the Prophet and he said, This is what you gathered us here for? Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to him in the Quran, but the Prophet from that point on forward started preaching the message publicly. And there was a very fascinating dynamic that was taking place. Much of the leadership and the establishment, the elites of that society, they rejected the message of the Prophet ﷺ. And they cast aspersions on the Prophet ﷺ, you know, slandering him, calling him all types of things like crazy and uh, sorcerer and uh, poet and uh, charlatan and all these different things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuted all of that. None of that is true. 
But at the same time, people were starting to accept Islam. And it was many of the people in the community, in the society, who had fallen through the cracks, had been oppressed by the community, had been oppressed and forgotten by the society. You had people like the family of Yasir, Yasir radiallahu anhu, Sumayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, their son Ammar radiallahu anhu. You had people like Bilal radiallahu anhu, and Suhaib radiallahu anhu, Khabbab ibn al-Arat, and so many people. But they initially, they tried to negotiate with the Prophet When the Prophet famously said, if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, I would not desist from my message. Then they turned to violence and aggression. And they started tormenting and torturing and persecuting and even killing anyone who would believe in the message of the Prophet so much so that the situation became so desperate that dozens and dozens of Muslims had to leave Mecca and go to Abyssinia, Habasha, East Africa and take refuge there. And the Prophet ﷺ continued his message until they gave an ultimatum to the family of the Prophet ﷺ who was still supporting him, even if they didn't all believe yet, like Abu Talib, saying that we will boycott and ostracize all of you. And for three years, they boycotted them. And they ostracized them and they cut them off. And it was a time of great suffering and sorrow and pain and death. Until the Prophet ﷺ suffered the loss of the two most beloved people in his life. Abu Talib, his uncle, and our mother, the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, Khadija al-Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. After which the Prophet ﷺ turned his attention to looking maybe for opportunities outside of Mecca. And he traveled to Ta'if. But he was met with a terrible response there in Ta'if where they stoned him and threw rocks at him and injured him terribly. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened and consoled the heart of the Prophet sallallahu When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon the Prophet ﷺ, the greatest honor ever bestowed upon any human being, and that was the journey of Al-Isra wal miraj And at the return from Al-Isra wal miraj the Prophet ﷺ was reinvigorated. And he started preaching to the people that would visit Mecca during the season of, seasons of Hajj, where he met a small group of humble people, poor farmers, and they accepted his message. And they went back and they brought back more, brought back more people. And the Prophet ﷺ sent people to go there and further spread the message until that small farm town to the north of Mecca, much of it had entered into the fold of Islam. And then that would lead to the fateful meeting the Prophet ﷺ had in Mina with more than 60 people from that small town who came there and gave the oath of allegiance to the Prophet ﷺ and presented him with a proposal. And the proposal was, come to us, O Messenger of Allah. Bring the believers to us. And let's spread Islam from there. And that would become al Madinah al-Munawwara, the beautiful illuminated city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that would then, you know, continue the story of Islam. So this background, the suffering, the pain, the adversity, the difficulty, the tests, the trials, one has to understand that and be aware of that and be mindful of that to be able to truly appreciate what Badr was, what Badr was and what Badr meant and what it continues to mean till today. Inna ma'al usri yusra. It was a real life demonstration of that dif with difficulty there is ease barakallahu fikum jazakumullahu khairan wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh
Jazakum Allah khair to Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda for that beautiful talk. And we would love, we would love to hear from you on what you thought of that opening lesson about the Battle of Badr from Sheikh Abdul Nasser Jangda. Um, we have some comments that we can share here on the screen from someone, uh, from, from those who are commenting here on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, let us know. Let us know what you thought of that opening talk by Sheikh Abdel Nasser Jangda. We can just quickly show some of the comments here. Um, someone's thanking Celebrate Mercy for reminding us of the Battle of Badr. Sister Reshma from San Francisco. Mashallah, Sister Reshma uh, was with us uh, recently when we went to Jerusalem and Mecca and Medina. It's really great to hear from you. Mashallah, thank you, uh, our dear sister. What else do we have? What else do we have from in the comments here? Someone's saying salam from South Jersey. Mashallah. And um, we have some others that are just saying Jazakallah Khair Sheikh and MashaAllah and thank you. Um, really great comments. Thank you to all who are uh, messaging us here on YouTube, MashaAllah. Now we have almost 400 computers and tablets connected to this program uh, at this current time, MashaAllah. Our next speaker that we're gonna bring to the stage here is Sheikh Yasser Fahmi. That's Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, MashaAllah. We're really excited to be to have him on the program. We also just wanted to um, remind you all that uh, in terms of, uh, we talked about how Ramadan is our heavy fundraising season. So we're going to uh, keep keep a, keep an eye on this uh, during the program because we actually have uh, some donors who are willing to match uh, donations during this webinar, inshallah. So currently we are at 15% of our Ramadan fundraising goal. We're pretty low in terms of where we need to be with our Ramadan fundraising. Um, and so we're hoping that this can really go much higher during the webinar. Um, we have donors that have committed to doubling um, whatever uh, we can raise today. If we can raise up to $20,000 during the webinar, then donors, uh, some donors have pledged to pitch in an additional $40,000. So we have an opportunity, if we can hit 20,000 in terms of what we raise during this webinar, then we can get matched by another 40. We can get a double match, uh, inshallah. And I just want everyone to know that if you donate larger amounts, if you donate larger amounts, take a look at this list of gifts. Um, we are giving out some really beautiful gifts in the month of Ramadan to those who are donating um, at least $100 or $500 or $1,000. Some of these gifts are worth hundreds of dollars. So please take a moment. If you appreciate some of the work that we've been doing at Celebrate Mercy, uh, since COVID and even in Ramadan, uh, a thousand hours of programs in the last two years, a thousand hours of programs in the last two years. So we have brought you over an hour a day of new programming every single day for the last 750 days. And that's almost one webinar every 36 hours. So inshallah, we hope that you all will keep the Celebrate Mercy team in your du'a but also consider making a donation to Celebrate Mercy to help us uh, continue this work. This is our heavy fundraising time of the year. This is a time when the how we do in Ramadan fundraising impacts our entire year. So we hope, inshallah, that let's try to hit the $20,000 mark during this webinar, inshallah, and then donors have pledged to double match it. So if we can hit $20,000 during this webinar, we have donors who said that they'll pitch in an additional $40,000, which gets us much closer to where we need to be in our goal. That means we can go up from 15% to 20% of our goal, inshallah. Right now, we are very low in terms of our Ramadan goal, uh, inshallah. So that's something that uh, we want to remind you all of. And inshallah, um, the link to donate is being shared in the chat. The link to donate is being shared in the chat. That is celebratemercy.com slash donate. I'm going to type it here in the chat room. Oops, I think I misspelled it there. Delete comment. CelebrateMercy.com slash donate is the link to, uh, to donate to. Inshallah. There we go. Or you could go to LaunchGood.com slash CM. LaunchGood.com slash CM, inshallah. So let's go ahead now and introduce uh, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi, um, who will be our next teacher, inshallah, um, for this program. 
Sheikh Yasser Fahmi. Let me bring up his bio and introduce him, inshallah. Sheikh Yasser Fahmi graduated from Rutgers Business School, and after working for a number of years in finance, he then moved to Egypt where he studied for eight years at Al-Azhar University. In his time at Al-Azhar, he attained numerous ijazas, independent certifications, and studied under many notable teachers, including Sheikh Ahmed Taha Rayyan. In 2013, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi became the first American Azhari to teach in the renowned Al-Azhar Mosque. Currently, he is the Muslim instructor at the Harvard Divinity School and the founder of the Prophetic Living Initiative. He also acts as the religious advisor for the Al-Farah Center. So without any further delay, inshallah, let's go ahead and bring uh, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi here to the stage, inshallah. Bismillah walhamdulillah. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah Allahumma salli wa sallim mubarak ala sayyidina muhammadin fil awaleen wa salli wa sallim mubarak ala sayyidina muhammadin fil akhirin wa salli wa sallim mubarak ala sayyidina wa maulana muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi al mala'i al a'la ila yawm al din alhamdulillah thumma alhamdulillah alhamdulillah alladhi bi ni'matihi tatimu al salihat uh, we are here today to discuss a very critical uh, event in the life of our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and in the life of the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is a moment where now the Muslimin are in Medina and they are establishing um, their full capacity. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam is establishing the foundations and the full capacity of this community. So the Prophet Sallallahu establishes the institution of Mu'akha, um, the brotherhood and the sisterhood between the Muhajireen and the Ansar, that these are two communities from two different areas, from Mecca and Medina, that now will be bound together under the tutelage of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in the spirit of Islamic brotherhood, meaning that the ties that bind them are far greater than the tribal lines and the bloodlines that they were so familiar with. But now the, the, bound, the, the, the bond of Islam, of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah becomes the essential bond. And with that, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam establishes <clears throat> the foundational space, the central location that all the believers will orbit. And that is Al-Masjid, Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi. This is truly sacred space. You know, the, 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 the Haram al-Madani, al which is the third sacred sanctuary um, in Islam. It is the place, it is the central location for the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's teaching, his guidance, his tarbiyah of the companions, his meeting with all sorts of wufud um, that have come through, emissaries, uh, peoples, uh, a lot of strategizing, collecting, gathering, all of that happened in the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and it became the central location where the hearts of the believers and their bodies orbited, subhanAllah. And that shows you the essential nature of these uh, institutions, the brotherhood and the sisterhood and the masjid. And then furthermore, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he's really uh, seeking to establish um, his affairs well. And so he comes into a lot of uh, treaties and pacts with uh, the people of Medina. Uh, and and the, 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 the kind of the people of Medina who were there were the Jews of Medina, um, some of the uh, Arab tribes of Medina. Um, but what we have to understand is that a lot of these pacts, and I can't get into the details of them because of time, but a lot of these pacts early on, um, they weren't firmly established because the skepticism around the Messenger وسلم, was still pretty real. And um, the attempts at thwarting um, the uh, establishment of this community were still very intense, obviously from from the Quraysh and from the, the, the Meccan people, um, they were not going to let the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam go to Medina and establish easily. Now, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did have independence, he had strength, and he was able even to come into treaties. But like I said, these pacts and these treaties were compromisable. Um, these people that he were coming into pacts with, they, were, they, could, they could have easily been manipulated, and they were multiple times 
in different occasions. So you have, for example, the pressures that were placed on uh, the people of Medina to not conform and to not work with and to not to ag be agreeable with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a famous incident that's found um, in, the, in, the, in the books of, of, of Asir, where uh, and if you're already Abdul, Abdul Rahman ibn Ka'b ibn Malik, uh, that a rajul min ashab al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Kufar Quraysh Katabu ila ibn uh, Ubay, Abdullah ibn Ubay. The, the Kufar of Quraysh, they sent a letter to Abdullah ibn Ubay. Um, and those that were worshipping with him from the, uh, you know, they were idol worshippers from the Aws and the Khazraj. And the, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that time was in Medina. This is before the battle, the grand battle of Badr, that, the reason for our gathering today. And they, in this letter, they said, إِنَّكُمْ أَوَيْتُمْ صَاحِبُنَا That you have taken in um, this friend of ours, referring to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now they're being facetious. Um, that we swear upon you that you are to fight him and that you are to exile him. Or that we're going to come to you in large force uh, 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 towards you, against you. And then until we, we fight you an intense fight and we will, we will, we will attack you and we will uh, attack your women etc. So this obviously was something that intimidated Abdullah ibn Ubay um, and who was with him. And then they came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they said to him um, this reality and that, you know, you, you were going to kind of stand against. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, you know, said that, you know, that this, this wa'id, this promise that has come from Quraysh, um, that has come to you, that this uh, threat that comes from Quraysh does not have to uh, thwart you or challenge you more than what you allow for it to challenge yourself. Um, do you truly want, and the Prophet uh, kind of asserts himself, do you truly want that your, your, your children and your brothers and your sisters will fight? And so when they heard the Messenger of kind of speak, with this type of uh, a fervor and authority, um, they, they immediately back down. You can see that their fickle nature between, you know, their alliance and their pacts, but also, you know, their fears of Quraysh because Quraysh up until that point was still the dominant authority or the identifiable dominant authority. So it was unclear. Now, this is the time period um, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, because of all of these efforts at thwarting the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions and attacking them. And the continued oppression, the continued oppression from the time of Mecca. Now, well, now they've come to Medina and they're trying to establish themselves in Medina. And Quraysh will still attack them, still, uh, um, you know, uh, intimidate them, etc. Now Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in Surah Al-Hajj, he gives a permission where he says, أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ that now the permission has been given to those who have been fought against, those who have been killed, because they were oppressed. That they were, they were, they, 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 you know, uh, they were, they were being attacked, and that they were being oppressed. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is surely capable of bringing bringing them victory. They were exiled from their homes without any type of justice or right in doing so. And the only blame that was upon them is that they said, Allah is our Lord. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in Surah Al-Hash, لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ And to the impoverished muhajireen, the migrants, الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ Who were exiled and exited from their homes. And they were stripped from their wealth. All they desire is God's grace and God's pleasure. And they bring victory to Allah and His Messenger. These are the truly uh, truthful ones. And however, on the other side, you have these mushrikeen uh, and these kuffar of Quraysh. يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ سُورَةُ الْأَنْفَالِ Verse number 36. يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ لِيَصُدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ to thwart and to push back, you know, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so here in these contexts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now gives the permission to the Messenger to fight, right? Um, 
كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالِ وَهُوَ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about how the Prophet ﷺ in communication with the companion says that now the fighting has been prescribed upon you and it is something that is displeasing to you. And so you see this was kind of, you know, uh, a, a, you know abuse after abuse, oppression after oppression, wronging after wronging, until now the community of believers had to stand up and had to fight back against this oppression. And it was no longer a, a, a tolerable reality because for many years they were they were compelled to not, uh, you know, uh, to not retaliate. But now the time has come. The establishment of the community is there. And now they must take, you know, very uh, specific steps in, in pushing back. And so you see the establishment now. And I'll just kind of run through the list because we have to close soon, inshallah. But now the Prophet ﷺ begins to have these reconnaissance missions in small little saraya. Uh, you know, expeditions that would go out to the the caravans, the caravans that were going north um, to Syria. And these were opportunities where the Messenger of can f- gain a lot more information and knowledge about, okay, what exactly are you guys doing? Where are you going? Your numbers, your people? Because obviously a lot of these caravans were, were full of so much of what was taken from the believers as is. And, and many other realities that, that the Prophet ﷺ had the right to fully go and confront um, the Quraysh who were on these caravans. But this was also an opportunity for the Prophet ﷺ to make small wins and to assert himself and to show the mushrikeen that the, the community of believers will not just be quiet uh, in the face of oppression. You're not just going to wantonly attack and intimidate and threaten and kill and steal and pillage and there's going to be no... Uh, no, no response. Now the response is so. The, the first, uh, the first Ghazwa in the history of the Medinan period before the great battle of Badr that we're here to commemorate today was Ghazwa Al Abwa, and um, in this Ghazwa, um, it was in Safar, Salat uh, Ifnatain min al Hijra, in the second year of the Hijra, and the number of Muslimin in it were around six. So you know, uh, very few in number. Then num- the second Sariya was. The Sharia of Ubaidu, uh, uh, Ubaidah ibn al Harith, and who awalu rayat in Aqadaha. This is the first time the flag was flown, and there were 60, 60 Muhajirin. There were 60 Muhajirin in the Sharia. Um, on the other side, there are around 200, uh, uh, you know, riders and men from the Mushrikeen. And the, the leader of the Mushrikeen in um, Sharia Ubaidah ibn al Harith was Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, and from the side of the believers was Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. Uh, the third Sariya was the Sariya of Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib. Um, uh, uh, it was called Sariya to Saif al Bahr. And um, this was uh, another moment where they were going to explore, understand. And in many of these, um, no, no fighting actually happened. Lam yakun baynahum qital. Um, there wasn't actual a lot of fight. There wasn't a fighting. There was, you know, kind of just some, maybe perhaps some intimidation tactics were present, learning, understanding, confronting, but no, no bloodshed, no fighting. The fourth one was Ghazwat uh, Buat, um, which happened in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal, Rabi' al-Anwar, the birth of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the second year. And there were 200 of the companions who went out in this one. Once again, in the same, um, uh, kind of intentionality of going out, asserting presence. And once again, they came back in this one without any uh, real um, skirmishes having happened. The fifth one was Ghazwat al Ushayra. Um, and the sixth, seventh one was Sariyat Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas. Uh, and the seventh, the seventh one was Ghazwat Badr al Ula, Ghazwat Safwan. Um, and this was uh, also. Uh, in that some of the uh, ibil and the mawashi, some of the camels and the uh, livestock um, were taken or attacked from some of the mushrikeen. And so the Prophet ﷺ sent out um, uh, Safwan uh, to go out to, to this region called Safwan to, um, to confront this, 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 this transgression against the livestock of the Messenger. Uh, the eighth one was Sariyat Abdullah ibn Jahsh. Al-Asadi. Um, and so these were the eight major saraya and ghazawat that preceded Ghazwat Badr al-Kubra. Um, obviously, I just kind of went over it, glossingly over and just highlighting it so that we can all kind of be mindful of it and remember, inshallah ta'ala, 
but my um, I think the, the, the best nasiha and guidance and insight that I have is that we in this context have to understand that the establishment and the building of the institutions of the capacity of the strength um, of the dawla, you know, the state is it was a, a, a mission now of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَأَعِدُّ لَهُمْ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مِنْ قُوَّةٍ and prepare for them what you have of power um, and so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam um, was not a meek person um, you know, he was not a pure, you know, uh, if you will, uh, pacifist uh, no, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was someone who stood his ground and, and he advocated for justice and he fought for it. And yes, in the face of oppression, there, uh, oppression and wrong and uh, evil, there is going to be a, a just a retaliation, a just war that will now have to ensue. Um, and this is in the context of the Quranic narrative. And if it wasn't for the fact that there is virtuous warfare that must exist, then you will see corruption on this earth. And so virtuous warfare is an uh, integral Qur'anic conception. Um, just like the just war theory, for example, of St. Thomas Aquinas, Islam has its, 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 its conception of a just war and um, a virtuous war. Uh, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and if it wasn't for the fact that you had these dafa, this push and pull between righteousness, goodness, and evil, then you would see the destruction, you know, lahuddimat, uh, you would see the destruction of churches and synagogues and monasteries and mosques. Yuthkaru fi hasmullah, where God's name is glorified. And so as Muslims and as people today, we have to understand that there is a core conception um, of a virtuous just war that uh, we believe in uh, as Muslimin, and that in the face of oppression, in the face of evil, in the face of wrong, there can be a pushback. Um, and, 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 and one should not be meek in this regard, uh, you know, and of course, this is not something that is done in any way, shape or form, according to one's own whims or desires. This is something that is much greater um, than, than, than the individual. But on a, uh, you know, philosophical level, um, this is kind of what transpired uh, in the time of, of, of the uh, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is what occurred uh, in the lead up to uh, the great battle of Badr, and inshallah, uh, I'm sure you're going to hear much more about that. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May he uh, have mercy upon the shuhada of Badr. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be in their ranks and the day of judgment in their company. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to have the elevated states that were, were gifted and granted to those righteous companions. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallillahu ma'ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakum Allah khair. Thank you to uh, Sheikh Yasser Fahmi for the beautiful talk um, and context that he provided, mashallah, in terms of the uh, Battle of Badr and the, and the permission that was granted by Allah for the Muslims to fight back uh, against the harassment, the raids, um, sometimes even the torture of Muslims uh, that was at the hands of the Quraysh in Mecca. So um, he gave us some really good context for understanding when the Muslims uh, began and were granted permission to fight back after, which was more than 13 years after the, um, the message began to spread in Mecca. So now let's review what we've learned so far. We talked, uh, Sheikh Abdel Nasser Jangda spoke about the beginning of the Muslim community in Mecca, uh, the Hijrah. The, uh, the, the emigration to Medina, the beginning of the Medinan community, and Sheikh Yasser Fahmi spoke about the continued harassment and threats from the Meccan Quraysh, even though there was this new, brand new Muslim community now uh, forming in Medina. And Sheikh Yasser Fahmi also discussed the uh, beginning skirmishes and fights that actually ensued uh, in the time after permission was granted for the Muslims to fight back uh, against these attacks. So Alhamdulillah, um, we now um, are, you know, at a place in this story where we're about to get into the events directly before the battle, the events directly before the battle. So we do thank Sheikh Yasser Fahmi for his talk. And our next speaker that we're going to be bringing to the stage here in just a moment is Sheikh Hasib Noor. Uh, Sheikh Hasib Noor, who will be our next teacher, inshallah, and he'll be getting into 
the uh, pre Badr events that took place in those, uh, literally in those days before the fighting took place at Badr. And mashallah, he, uh, he is someone who's a great teacher that we've had recently at our Umrah trips as well with us. Um, for those of you who know him, you know that he really knows his sirah very well. And he uses visuals very well too to help explain using maps, pictures, and things like that, alhamdulillah. Just a couple of reminders that we wanna encourage you all to, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please take one second and click on that like button. This is a great way to share the video because the more likes we get on the video, the more that this video will be recommended to other people. Um, so it's a great way to help us out by clicking that like button if you actually are benefiting from the program, inshallah. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel as well. And if you click on the bell, you can be notified whenever we go live, inshallah. And take a moment as well to uh, encourage people to join this webinar. This is a way to multiply your blessings in Ramadan by just getting people to watch, getting people into the door to be viewing this program is a great way to share it. This flyer, uh, we call it the Live Now flyer, has been posted on our social media. So you can share it, you can retweet it, you can post it to your story, uh, inshallah. And if you wanna post about the program as it's happening, um, we will actually be entering your names in a raffle to win some big prizes. Prizes that are worth uh, hundreds of dollars, including, take a look behind me on my wall here, this, uh, this sandal, this wooden sandal, it's a three foot tall wooden sandal on my wall. That is one of the prizes we're gonna be giving out today at the end of the webinar to those who are watching and who are posting about the program using the hashtag CMBedr. Make sure you tag Celebrate Mercy. Make sure you include maybe a quote by one of the teachers, uh, a clip from, a video clip from the webinar. Post it to your Instagram story. Make sure your post is a public post so that we can go find your name and we'll put your name in a raffle at the end of the program to win. One of the great things you can do is just take a picture of your family watching the program. Make sure we can see the webinar in the background. Uh, we can see your family or just the, the webinar projecting in your home, inshallah. That's a great way to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to use the hashtag as well. Um, just a reminder again that we have pledges from some of our donors that if we can raise $20,000 from the audience during this webinar, these donors, these supporters will match it twice over. So if we can hit 20,000, donors have committed to give 40,000 more, which means we will get 10% closer to our goal. That's a total of $60,000 because we really need that boost right now. Right now we're only at 15% of our Ramadan fundraising goal. We've raised about almost $90,000. Um, but our goal is 600,000. Last year we raised about 540,000. So we're, we're pretty behind on our fundraising target. And we hope inshallah that we can try to hit 20,000 today during this better webinar. We'll update you how we're doing so that hopefully we can get that double match uh, inshallah. So how do you donate? You just go to launchgood.com slash CM. That's launch.com slash CM. You can make a donation there. There are even ways you can donate cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Um, Ethereum and others, inshallah. So there's ways if you go to the Launch Good page, you can learn about how to do that. There is even a zakat eligible scholarship fund. So those who are looking to give their zakat in Ramadan, on the Launch Good page, you can read what we use zakat money for. We have a very strict policy on how we use zakat money only as scholarships for those who are zakat eligible who cannot afford our uh, paid programs, uh, inshallah. So go to launchgood.com slash CM. And there's another sponsor we wanted to mention before we go to uh, Sheikh Hasib Noor. And this is a family, mashallah, we're very grateful to them. They helped cover some of the costs of today's uh, Bedr webinar that you're watching right now. And I'm going to read uh, their dua request. So this is from the, uh, the Hajj Ahmed family. And they sponsored this webinar on behalf of the late Dr. Abdullah Hajj Ahmed. They asked for all of us, everyone raise your hands and say ameen to this dua, inshallah. Please pray for Dr. Abdullah Hajj Ahmed of Mare, Syria. Allah knows how many he helped as a doctor in a camp in Azaz, Syria. Sadly, he passed away this past January in Turkey. May Allah give his family ease and success, and may he give Dr. Abdullah Jannatul Firdaus, the highest level of paradise. Everyone say ameen. 
to him. And this is a beautiful example of how a family uh, can sponsor these webinars in Ramadan uh, to help us cover the cost, but they can also do it on behalf of a loved one who has passed away. So everyone, inshallah, please say amin to this family's dua, inshallah. Um, and we pray that it is counted as a sadaqa jariya for them and for Dr. Abdullah, inshallah. So I am now going to uh, introduce uh, uh, Sheikh Hasib Noor to our audience. And he will, uh, now we're getting into the battle of Badr, the, the events right before Badr and why these are important for us to reflect on and to commemorate, uh, inshallah. Let me introduce Sheikh Hasib Noor to our audience. Sheikh Hasib Noor is the founder and president of the Legacy Institute, which is an institution dedicated to our Islamic heritage. He's also an instructor with Al Maghrib Institute and Qalam Institute, and he is among uh, he is also among the founders of Faith Global, which is a global platform for creating faith based community spaces worldwide. Uh, he comes from Afghan heritage grew up in the United States and studied at the College of Islamic Law at the University of Medina. He's pursued his studies in Medina uh, for over a decade, studying with about 50 scholars that specialized in fiqh, fatwa, hadith, tafsir, history, sira, and various Islamic sciences. He also has an affiliation with the Center for Historical Studies of Medina, and he's part of Taiba Research, the Society of Archaeology and Historical Sites in Medina, uh, and serves as an educational consultant. So we are so honored to have uh, Sheikh Hasib Noor with us. He just within the last half hour sent us over his uh, pre-recorded video uh, and you will see some visuals and some pictures here as well. So um, I'm really excited about his talk uh, and we're going to now bring to the stage Sheikh Hasib Noor. Uh, welcome, alhamdulillah, and uh, to celebrate mercy for this beautiful event on remembering Badr. Uh, to get right into it, inshallah, on the discussion of remembering Badr, um, we have discussed it in a way which helps us to understand how the event took place on site, according to the historical locations, uh, in a work that we've, um, inshallah, we're working on called Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and the Final Messenger, uh, in the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi through the historical locations where the events actually took place, which will be published, inshallah, in both English uh, and Arabic uh, with the Legacy Institute, inshallah, as a uh, But if we were to understand uh, what exactly happened uh, for the event to take place and the um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to take such steps to actually uh, face the Quraysh. We have to understand that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi prior to this uh, essentially was trying to fight off a, a war economy that the Quraysh essentially tried to establish. And that war economy would be used to attack the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and the society that was going to be built, the Muslim society that essentially was being founded in the middle of the Arabian Peninsula that would uh, be against the Quraysh uh, rule of law so hence they were trying to prepare for um essentially a war economy where they sent this caravan of now returning back from uh levant which is syria and palestine with over a thousand camels uh fifty thousand gold dinars if you do the math that's 4.27 grams of gold per each of those gold dinars and multiply by that a thousand and uh, the camels itself so that's a lot of money that's coming back not including appreciation um that essentially would be used as a war economy against the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Muslims. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam essentially uh, had a decision to then go out and to intercept this, this caravan. Now, uh, where was this caravan essentially and how did it uh, take uh, a route? Essentially was coming back from the uh, path from the Levant, which is Syria and Palestine. And it was passing um, across the normal caravan route passing a city known as as Badr. Uh, this city um, is uh, approximately 150 kilometers uh, away from uh, Medina. And uh, this roughly is the path that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu took to intercept and go to uh, Badr. Badr is uh, southwest of Medina, 150 kilometers. And this map essentially shows the uh, locations where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu essentially stopped on the way or he passed by. Uh, some of the locations we're going to talk about, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, but with regards to some of the places where uh, essentially 
the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam stopped by and was on his way to Badr. The first of them we're going to speak about is uh, none other than a place known as Masjid al suqya Masjid al suqya it currently looks like this. It has been uh, reestablished um, and and um, uh, basically protected by uh, Ottomans, uh, the Ottomans who who uh, uh, made sure to protect the uh, actual masjid in location. This is its current structure. Uh, this masjid is known as Masjid al suqya for the following reasons. Uh, and it is in the, uh, basically the um, establishment or the place where the, uh, known as the Hijaz train station used to be, where the train station connected from Istanbul all the way to Medina, uh, built by the Ottomans. And this is, this is actually within that structure. This land actually belonged to Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he uh, first asked the companions, who is there that's going to come out and essentially um, go with me on this journey uh, The Prophet ﷺ did not force the companions To do something they did not want to do So uh, there's a difference of opinion over their number Some of them say for 313 The famous number that we all know of And the number goes all the way to 340 uh, But what's established is it was over 300 And this uh, range, 313, 314, etc And the Prophet ﷺ asked the people of Medina Because he did not want to make them do something they did not sign up for. So essentially, uh, they had signed a pact with the Prophet that he that they were going to protect him inside the city. That was the Medinan Ansari pact that happened in Mecca in Bayatul Aqaba, the first and the second, which is the pact of Aqaba. Uh, they they essentially agreed in Mecca. So the Prophet did not want them to essentially sign up for something they didn't uh, they didn't uh, agree to. So the Prophet in that essence. He um, asked who was going to come out. So uh, the Ansar in, in the resounding numbers, uh, in fact, agreed uh, that they would go to, with the Prophet ﷺ out of the city in order to uh, defend and to intercept this caravan, to intercept this uh, particular caravan. Now, having said that, this was a very um, difficult moment for the Prophet ﷺ himself to go and uh, the Sahaba essentially had this, uh, m- not reluctancy, but this element of fear of the pro- for the Prophet ﷺ. He rested here in order to uh, gather the companions in this particular area, uh, just outside of Medina, about two kilometers away from Masjid al-Nabawi. And he um, stayed in this land and he prayed. And this masjid is what is historically known as the location where the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ prayed here and essentially gathered their uh, provisions and hence why it's called Masjid al suqya It's in the area where Sa'd ibn Waqqas essentially um, provided the place or the meeting place for all the uh, Sahaba to gather. And the Prophet وسلم, essentially made uh, a dua for the barakah of Medina. Uh, and this is reported in, um, in the works of history that the Prophet وسلم, essentially uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, you have made for Ibra- in, uh, Ibrahim as your close companion, your Khalil, and your servant. And he is the one who prayed for the people of Mecca. And I am your servant and your messenger, and I pray for the people uh, of Medina, like the way that he prayed for the people, like the way that Ibrahim prayed for the people of Mecca. And I ask that you increase and make it twice as much barakah than Ibrahim had had made dua for Mecca. And he said, I ask that you uh, bless them in their sa'ah, and in their mud, mud and saw are basically uh, the uh, um, volume measurements of how they used to measure their uh, trade as well as what they used to measure in terms of uh, making wudu or, or using water. Uh, and he says that I make the same dua and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to um, uh, bless them twice as much. And then the Prophet says, Allahumma habib ilayna al-Madina, oh Allah make Medina beloved to us, kama habbabta ilayna. Uh, Mecca, like you made Mecca beloved to us, and he said, make it mo- twice as much beloved to us. Uh, Allahumma inni harramtu ma bayna la bataiha kama harramta ala lisani Ibrahim al haram. And he says that, and I have made it a sanctuary, just like you have made it a sanctuary to Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is a dua the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam made at this location in this area, like essentially for the people of Medina, for Baraka, for the love of Medina to be twice as uh, much uh, than uh, than Mecca. So the Prophet ﷺ essentially made that dua in this location as he was leaving uh, Badr in this tumultuous trip. It has settled the, the, the companions, this dua of Rasulullah ﷺ. Uh, 
Uh, and this teaches us also the, how much the Prophet ﷺ cared for uh, giving solace and comfort to the companions. Essentially, uh, Abu Sufyan, uh, he had um, a uh, spy that would um, uh, oversee, essentially, uh, what was happening ahead. Uh, and uh, that, that spy, his name was Dhamdam uh, ibn Amr al-Ghifari, uh, who was sent uh, a, 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 as a reconnaissance to understand what was happening around. And they found out that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu essentially was leaving Medina and coming uh, to uh, Badr in, to, in order to intercept the caravans. So he sent Dhamdam ibn uh, Amr al-Ghifari to Quraysh to alert them to the imminent danger that threatened his life and the life of, of, of those people in the caravan. Um, and in essence, uh, Dhamdam ibn Amr al-Ghifari reached uh, um, is, uh, the Mecca, and before entering Mecca, took, uh, Dhamdam um, essentially created a, a huge uh, outcry, which in essence, um, the people of Mecca became extremely um, uh, afraid of, and they came out, and he started to scream, oh people of Quraysh, the caravan, the al-Qafil, al-Qafil, the caravan, the caravan, your wealth that is with Abu Sufyan, Muhammad and his companions are trying to overtake it. And I don't think that you can reach them there in time, help and help. And essentially this, this massive um, outcry that, that occurred. Uh, during that outcry, while it was happening, uh, Abu Sufyan swerved the caravan route, as you can see in front of you, this uh, image, which basically made it go uh, in other than the route of Badr. So he took it off of the normal caravan route and he uh, tried to reach uh, uh, back to Mecca, uh, and essentially why the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was making his way uh, to uh, to Badr. Now, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi while he was uh, making his way there, a number of events uh, happened. Um, these number of events uh, are with regards to the events on the way uh, to Badr. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while he was on his way in his tumultuous journey, as you can see, it, it was, it's still pretty much preserved to this day uh, in this um, uh, in its topography and its uh, arduousness and, and difficulty. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed through these particular valley, valleys, Wadi Zafran and others, uh, uh, and he settled in a place called Bir Roha and a number of um, uh, locations where he took rest. This is one of them. And alhamdulillah, the, the well to this day is preserved. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ essentially uh, made a number of um, uh, recommendations and uh, uh, approaching the um, the uh, companions in uh, in asking their advice what he should do. As Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said to him, uh, in essence, uh, seek the consultation of of the companions. And when he passed by Wadi Zafran. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sought the com uh, the co advice of the companions and what he should do. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala uh, uh, stood up and he started to speak and say, "Oh, Messenger of Allah, we're with you and we're going to support you." And then he sat down. Then Umar radiallahu anhu stood up and he started to speak um, and say, "We're going to support you." And say, "Ya Rasulullah, inna ha wallahi Quraysh wa izzuha." Wallahi ma dhallat mundhu a'izzat Wallahi ma amanat mundhu kafarat Wallahi la tuslim izzaha abadan Wala thiqalatunan Habbi li dhalika habba Wa idda li dhalika udda I basically said, oh, 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 messenger of Allah These are the Quraysh They did not, uh, they did not remove the arrogance of honor from their hearts since the beginning They did not believe after they disbelieved And they will not uh, they will not submit from their basically arrogant honor. And we are the ones that are going to stand against it. And if you're going to allow us, we're going to prepare for it as much as we can. So he basically gave a very riling speech. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam essentially kept, kept quiet. Uh, and in essence, um, the Ansar realized that the Prophet Muhammad Alaihi was actually wanting them to speak. So he said, so they said, Ya Rasulullah, it's as if you want us to speak. And he said, yeah. Prophet smiled. So Miqdad ibn Amr, uh, Aswad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, was a tall man. Uh, and he stood up and uh, he said, Ya Rasulullah, in the imli la amr Allahi fanahnu ma'ak. He says, Oh, Messenger of Allah, go uh, on the command of Allah and we are with you. And we're not going to tell you what Bani Israel told their Prophet, meaning Musa alayhi salam, 
فذهب أنت وربك فقاتل إن ها هنا قاعدون you and your lord go fight we're gonna sit here and basically chill and rest ولكني ولكن أذهب اذهب أنت وربك فقاتل إن معكما مقاتلون you rather we're going to tell you you and your lord go fight we're going to be with you among those who fight والذي بعثك بالحق لو سرت بنا إلى برك الغماد أو برك الغماد لجالدناك معك من من دونه حتى تبلغه he says even if you go to Barq al-Ghimad which is like the southern portion of the Arabian Peninsula and you, uh, you tell us to go into the ocean we're going to follow with you فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ودع له بالخير the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was so happy with that and he prayed for him uh, uh, and this was in Wadi Dhafran which is after this area where they rested here in this, uh, in this uh, picture and this teaches us subhanAllah the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم I uh, was so pleased with the companions and Ibn Masood said, Wallahi, I would never been uh, or I wanted to be more like a man like the day I saw Miqdad ibn Aswad say this to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and it made him so happy that he finally had companions uh, who stood with by him, people that stood by him, not the people of Mecca. Essentially, the people of Medina were the ones that stood by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and said, Ya Rasulullah, go wherever you go, fight and you and your Lord will fight. We will be with you among those who defend. Uh, and in essence, subhanAllah, the Prophet Muhammad uh, settled then uh, on his way. As you can see different pictures of the of this well. Uh, this was one of the wells the Prophet had passed by. Uh, then uh, on his way to uh, settling Badr, he passed by this massive, massive sand dune. It's one of the biggest sand dunes in the world. They are call, uh, called Khatib al-Hannan. Uh, and then the Prophet settled in the area of Badr uh, after a five-day journey from the 12th of Ramadan until the 17th of Ramadan where the Prophet ﷺ has settled in this exact area. Uh, and you can see exactly where the Prophet ﷺ settled on the bottom right, there's a masjid. Uh, that masjid is called Masjid Arish, where the Prophet ﷺ's camp essentially was, and it was built over. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ uh, established uh, this area as his camp in front of the battlefield, which is this area exactly, and in front of the wells. This is one of the wells, uh, which the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and the Sahaba drank from, uh, ﷺ. And now it sets up the events of what the battle took place. It says essentially in front of you, this area. Um, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless, uh, celebrate mercy over what are the events of now building up to that particular battle, uh, inshallah ta'ala. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam habibina wa nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakumullahu khair al jazaa'a. Jazakumallah khair to our dear brother uh, Hasib Moor for the uh, the beautiful uh, talk and explanation and the visuals that he shared. Um, we would love to have your feedback. We're going to share some of your comments right now as you're watching. How are you enjoying the program so far? How are you enjoying the program so far? How are you benefiting from it? Are you learning? Are you inspired? Uh, let us know, inshallah. And I know some of you are posting about the program using the hashtag. Uh, we will share some of your uh, with some screenshots of what you all are posting about this program, inshallah. A little bit later in the program, we will share some of what you are sharing, uh, inshallah, with speaker quotes or pictures, uh, inshallah. So um, right after we hear from our next uh, teacher, and that is Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, um, we will share some of what you guys are tweeting or posting about regarding this webinar, inshallah. And what are some of the nice comments that we're seeing on YouTube? Maybe we can post some of those right now uh, to see how the audience is enjoying the program and benefiting from the program. Let's just quickly share some of them. Sister Qudrat is saying, Alhamdulillah for this program. May Allah reward the Celebrate Mercy team and their loved ones and teachers. The plants uh, send their gratitude because Sister Qudrat is always watching the webinars with her plants. MashaAllah. What else do we have here with some of these uh, comments. Uh, Ambra says, love the visuals, love the visuals. And we pray that inshallah, all of you will be able to, to go to Mecca and Medina and visit these beautiful sites uh, where the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions walked and they talked and they prayed uh, and they fought. Um, Alhamdulillah, this is so beautiful. The sister is posting this, mashallah. Uh, these are great comments. These are really great comments we're seeing uh, so amazing. I joined later, but we'll definitely be going back and watching the replay. Inshallah. Thank you from Sister Sana. Mashallah. Um, any other uh, comments we want to highlight here real quick before we go on? Sister Rashida, Mashallah. She was with us when we just went to Mecca and Medina. 
um, and Jerusalem. She said, Jazakallah khair for this blessed history it takes me back to when we were at Badr with our group in Medina, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Yes, we actually visited the sites of Uhud and other battles, mashallah. Um, uh, we also have, I see a comment, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this one here. Fariha said, the photographs and maps were amazing. SubhanAllah brings the subject to life. Awesome lesson, mashallah. Where, well, you all are in a treat. Uh, you all are in for a treat with uh, Sheikh Hisham, Mahmoud coming up next. Then we're gonna have Dr. Shadi and Masri coming up, come up next. We have still we still have Sheikha Aisha Prime and Sheikha Tamara Gray. So don't go anywhere because uh, mashallah, uh, we're getting right into the battle here um, and the lessons from the battle and the aftermath of the battle inshallah and the lessons from the battle that is about to start inshallah. I also just want to remind everyone that later today, uh, by the way, we have five webinars. We have five webinars taking place today. Just today, we had a morning session. We had this better session. We have a kids program. We have an afternoon recitation. We have an evening recitation of the Quran as well. So later today, uh, starting at 6.45 p.m., we have the continuation of the children's series called The Walking Quran. So I hope that you all are planning to join that, uh, inshallah. And if you want to learn more about this kids program, please visit celebratemercy.com slash kids. That's celebratemercy.com slash kids. We'll post the link for this uh, here on the YouTube comments and Facebook comments celebratemercy.com slash kids. Today's episode, you definitely will want to tune into. It'll be great. We also have some contests for the kids, some prizes. So we'll be, uh, it'll be a fun session today, inshallah. Don't forget, I hope you've clicked on that like button as you're watching on YouTube and subscribe to our channel uh, and share the link. The link that you see on the bottom of your screen, please do share that, inshallah. I'm also gonna show you another link that uh, I mentioned earlier about how you can donate to Celebrate Mercy. Don't forget, I, I just made a slide about this to remind you guys, we have a double match today, a double match today. So we have generous supporters that said, if we raise $20,000 during this Bedr webinar, then they will pitch in an additional $40,000. So we have a pledge from multiple supporters that said, if you all can, can donate up you know, 20,000 or more today, then they will pitch in an extra $40,000. And I just checked and I think we've raised maybe three, maybe up to 4,000 so far. So please uh, take a moment and visit launchgood.com slash CM. There is also a Zakat eligible scholarship fund you can read about there uh, and what we're using the Zakat money for. And don't forget that, look at all these beautiful gifts for people who are giving larger donations. We ship you some really beautiful gifts in the mail. And some of these are new gifts that you probably haven't seen before. Um, some new books and artwork, uh, and this volumes, this beautiful new translation of Riyadh al-Salihin, uh, a very famous collection of hadiths on character. So check out the gifts that we're giving to the donors, inshallah, and you can donate at launchgood.com slash cm, launchgood.com slash cm. We're posting that link there on the bottom. A little bit later in the program, probably right after Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, we are going to select one person to win an Umrah trip and also a $1,000 cash prize, inshallah. And we'll talk to you about how you could potentially win those Umrah trips as well. But right now, I'm gonna introduce Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud to our audience, inshallah, so we can learn about, uh, right now, we're getting right into the battle of Badr. We're getting right into the battle of Badr. This is where, you know, mashallah, the story is about to climax. Uh, and I hope you all are watching with your families, listening, and just remembering those who sacrificed so much for us, those who sacrificed so much for us. One thing that I love to say on this webinar is, where would we, where would we be today if Badr went the other way? Think about that for a moment. Where would we be today if Badr went the other way? Uh, and that's something to reflect on because we are Muslim today, you know, uh, with, you know, due to the sacrifices of those who brought this deen forward to us for 1400 years. And it began with sacrifices like Badr, pivotal moment in our history. And we always should keep the, uh, the, the Sahaba from Badr in our prayers. And we will be making a prayer for all of them at the end of this webinar, a beautiful recitation of their names and dua for them with our dear brother uh, Sinan Hafiz, inshallah. So I'm gonna now introduce our dear teacher, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud. He's joined us on many of these programs, including in the Ramadan, mashallah, 
I hope you all uh, know who he is, because if you don't, then you need to know who he is. Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud has studied theology, hadith, legal theory, jurisprudence, ethics, Quran recitation, and Arabic with scholars in Morocco, Mauritania, and Egypt. He's taught for more than a decade at Yale, Princeton, and Harvard. Then he left academia to institute Lanterna, an educational initiative that intends to establish learning collectives throughout North America. He continues to read with scholars and students in the United States, and currently Sheikh Hisham resides in Pennsylvania with his wife and four children. And I want to encourage you all to check out lanterna.com, uh, the retreat that they're doing uh, in Ramadan, a uh, virtual retreat, beautiful programs, beautiful publications as well. So check out lanterna.com and make sure you're following them on YouTube as well. And uh, we were really honored to have Sheikh Hisham with us on our recent Umrah trips as well. And we'll be seeing much more of him, inshallah, on Celebrate Mercy. So Sheikh Hisham, Mahmoud, uh, it's great to, to have you with us. Oh, I love the, I love the background, mashallah. <laughs> so it's great to have you with us, and inshallah, we'll get started. Uh, I, I'm just hanging out with Van Gogh over here, alhamdulillah, from the Rajan Estate in Sterling, Virginia, alhamdulillah, I mean, um, I'd like to just begin with salawat. Sallallahu ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala man wala Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh And I'd like to begin by thanking Celebrate Mercy uh, for um, for keeping me up so late every night with the uh, khatam of the Quran and the, the reading of the juz that they made me lose my voice. And so may Allah forgive Tariq and Masidi, especially in these 10 nights of forgiveness uh, for keeping us up on the East Coast until around three o'clock in the morning. And I'm only kidding, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the efforts of this incredible group, this uh, visionary organization, Celebrate Mercy, that is calling us as Muslims to recall our history, to, re to, uh, to uh, remind us of the greatness of our past so that we may um, seek to derive the inspiration and the benefit from uh, the sacrifices of those who went before us. Um, these are the people who died so that you and I could say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. These are the people who paid with their lives so that we may be delivered and so that the message of the Prophet could be conveyed uh, to, to, to us and to those who are in our circles. And may we not, de may we not betray them uh, the trust. May we not betray them the trust. May we not betray them the trust. Amin ya rabbil alameen. The story of Badr, as you have heard from Sheikh Yasser and Sheikh Hasib, may Allah bless them both and preserve them both. Um, it's, uh, it, it begins, and in, in the context of it really starts with the Pledge of Aqaba. If, if you go back to the Pledge of Aqaba, this is where the Ansar came to the Prophet Wasallam, both Aus and Khazraj and pledged to the Prophet وسلم, that they would protect the city of Medina should it ever fall under attack. And that they did. And so the Battle of Badr did not happen in Medina. And we heard from Sheikh Hasib that uh, what the Prophet وسلم, was waiting to hear as he was taking the counsel of all of the companions after they knew that the, uh, the army of Quraysh had gathered uh, 900 to 1,000 men. The way that the Prophet ﷺ knew that, he asked, uh, how many camels are they sacrificing per day? And his scouts told him, or his spies told him, that they're sacrificing between 9 and 10 camels a day. And so he said that, a, he said that um, therefore, they are between 900 and 1,000 men, which means that they were outnumbered 3 to 1. And this was, uh, this was not their intention. They wanted the caravan. They didn't want war. They wanted the caravan because in that caravan there was 50,000 dinars worth, 50,000 dinars, 50,000 gold coins worth 
of the Muslims' property that Abu Sufyan was going to Sham to sell and to and, and coming back with the with the 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 uh, Anfal. They, they, it was referred to as Anfal, spoils of war. But even before there was a war that had ensued, it was it was the property of the Muslims, and so they wanted uh, the caravan. But they could not ca catch the caravan. Abu Sufyan had uh, rerouted, as Sheikh Hasib Noor had mentioned, and they couldn't catch the caravan. And instead, they had uh, found themselves on the precipice of war now. And these were people who had rushed out of Medina. The Prophet had said, um, whoever has an animal, let him, a, a beast of burden, let him ride it, let him mount it. Uh, and they left immediately, meaning that there were so many people left behind in Medina who would have loved to join the Prophet uh, on, uh, if, if they had known that this was a war. But the Prophet whoever was in earshot of his announcement, prepared himself and they left so many people behind. And so they met there uh, in uh, Badr. And Badr was known for its wells, as Sheikh Hasib has just mentioned to us. And one of the things that um, we should know is that the Prophet wasallam passed, uh, he came to the first of a series of wells and he, <clears throat> and he decided to encamp there. And one of the companions asked the Prophet wasallam, saying, is this revelation or is this a strategy? Uh, are we here for, for a strategic purpose or is this revelation? If it's revelation, of course, we have no say in the matter. If it's strategy, then I have another strategy to propose. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, Bal al harbu al makida He said, rather, this is war and strategy. And so the man said, then let us then destroy all of the wells, except for the last well, and make our encampment there. And that way the Quraysh would have no access to water. And so when they fight, they will be fighting for water. When we fight, we will be fighting for Allah and His Messenger. And so the Prophet ﷺ loved the idea. They destroyed all of the wells and they got to the very last well. And that's the well that they, that they occupied. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and then they built a reservoir around that well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down rain that filled the reservoir. Allahu Akbar wa hamd. It filled the reservoir. And um, and this was in the 17th day of Ramadan. They had left Medina the third day of Ramadan to arrive at the battle. Uh, and, the, and the battle was fought on the 17th. So it was 150 kilometers away from Medina. And you can imagine how tired the Quraysh were, how tired the Muslims were when they arrived. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down His tranquility among them. Now, when they arrived at that well, and they uh, that that night, the Prophet sallallahu heard from uh, different Sahaba. He heard from different companions what what they were prepared to do because they saw the army before them, and they knew that they were a thousand men and that they were outnumbered three to one. And so the Prophet sallallahu heard from his different companions, and. These are the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whom Musa Alayhi Salam when he was privy to their character and who they were, he said, Ya Allah, make me among them. Make me among them. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, No Musa, you have your own mission. And then he said, Then make some of their followers among me, among my, among my, and Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala decreed, that they would be the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu These, if you compare the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu to the companions of Musa or Isa السلام, look at what Musa السلام, he says, قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى إِنَّا لَنْ نَدْخُلَهَا أَبَدًا مَا دَامُوا فِيهَا فَذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا هَا هُنَا قَاعِدُونَ They said, Oh Moses, and they call him by his first name, they call him by his first name. They said that we will not enter into that city so long as the, uh, the, uh, such a formidable enemy awaits us inside that city. So you go along with your Lord and fight on our behalf. We'll sit right here and wait, wait for you to return. And so that was the response of the people of Musa. Look at the Hawari Yun who asked 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down a, 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 a table and they asked Isa alayhi pray that Allah send down a table so that they said, uh, they said, we want to eat from it so that our hearts find uh, satisfaction, so that we're, we're, we're sat- our hearts find satisfaction, and so that we know that you have told us the truth and that we be a witness to the miracle. This was, this was they, they wanted to test Isa as to, as to know whether or not he was actually being truthful with them. Uh, the, the whole time that he was with them. This, these were the companions of Isa. So look at the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who um, Al-Miqdad, Al-Miqdad ibn Amr, who says to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Ya Rasulullah, imdi nima amarak Allahu fa nahnu ma'ak. He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, not O oh, Muhammad, like the like, like Bani Israel said, said to Sayyidina Musa Alaihi Wasallam, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, um, go wherever Allah has commanded you. We are with you. We are with you. Not go you and your Lord and you will find us here waiting. We are with you, they said. And Allah's Messenger وسلم, accepted everything that he heard and he was waiting and he was waiting and he was waiting. And he said, Ayyuhannas, he said, O oh, people, Ashiru alayya, Ayyuhannas. Uh, give me your opinion, O oh people. Until Saad ibn Mu'ad, who was uh, one of the, he was the, the one of the gems of Medina. He was the leader of the Aus, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, it was, it's as though you want to hear from us. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, Indeed, Ajal. He said, Yes, indeed. And so Saad ibn Mu'ad, radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Laqad amanna bika wa sadaqnaq. And this is, look Look at how different this is from what the companions of Isa said to Isa and his son Jesus. He said, we believe, we have believed in you and we affirm your truth. We have believed in you and we affirm your truth. وَشَهِدْنَا أَنَّ مَا And we witness that what you have brought is true. Which is, Look at how that's contrasted where they say, we want to know. To Jesus, we want to know that what you have brought is the truth, and we want to know that you're truthful, and we want to be a witness to the miracle <laughs> of the table coming down. The uh, Saudi Muad says that we it's 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 amazing, it's amazing because mm, Allahu Akbar, because Saudi Muad it's as though he is directly addressing the Prophet by contra by in contradistinction specific verbatim contradistinction to uh, of what the companions of Musa and the companions of Isa both said to Musa and Isa alayhi He said, وَشَهِدْنَا أَنْ مَا جِئْتَ بِهِ هُوَ الْحَقِّ And we witnessed that what you have brought, that th- that is the truth. وَأَعْطَيْنَاكَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ عُهُودًا وَمَوَاثِقَنَا ومواثي- عهود- عَلَى السَّمْعِ وَالطَّاعَةِ And we have given you our promises and our covenants to hear and obey you. And that and, and, and they didn't covenant to obey the Prophet and to fight with the Prophet outside Medina. They did not. But he said that, that that's that what whatever we covenanted with you in in, in, in uh, Aqaba, that covers defense and offense. And it covers Medina and anywhere else you wish to go. And they said and, and on, on hearing you and obeying you. And this is in contradistinction from what Al-Miqdad said. Al-Miqdad said, go wherever Allah commands you. But Sa'ad ibn Mu'an said, go wherever you please. Go wherever you please to go. And we will go with you. Now, uh, uh, we are with you, he said. We are with you. So I swear by the one who sent you in truth, that if you were to penetrate this sea, that we would penetrate it right with you. And um, and subhanAllah, this this is the this is this is what the Prophet is receiving from Saad ibn Mu'ad. And so the Prophet was so pleased with this answer. These are the men. And from among the faithful there are men. 
men sadakallah sadaku ma ahdullah that they that they um that they uh fulfilled what they had covenanted covenanted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said I have been promised ihda ta'ifatain I have been promised one of the two groups either the caravan or the army and the caravan you know that's what he said but what happened with the caravan they couldn't catch the caravan so now the army is promised in other words i have been promised victory over ihda ta'ifatain over one of the two either the caravan or the army the caravan's gone we weren't granted victory over the caravan but we have victory over the army and i see ka'anni ara masari al qawm he said i see where the people will be will, will fall and he asked he, he had earlier asked who the quraish had brought and they said ya rasulullah they brought so and so and so and so and so and so and so all their leaders all their leaders except for abu lahab he stayed behind all their leaders and he stayed behind for a reason we can't get into it right now but all their leaders and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rejoiced and he said quraish has thrown up for us the the the, the delight of their eyes in other words the 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 choicest part of their livers <laughs> that they have chosen and and so he said and so this is where umayyah ibn khalaf will fall this is where abu jahl will fall this is where so and so will fall this is where so and so and he's pointing he's pointing to the places where the the leaders of quraish will fall allahu akbar wa lillahi alhamd what does that do for the morale of people who are outnumbered three to one what does that do allahu akbar and so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's how they they spend that night and the, the the rain comes down and it fills the reservoir and this is in the 17th night of ramadan ramadan was just a few months earlier ramadan was the fasting of ramadan was obligated on the muslims so this is their first ramadan this is their first ever ramadan and subhanallah the the, the quraish choose um the the, the uh, no subhanallah allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina muhammad so the next morning then uh, to bring this to a close the next morning the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam lines up the troops he lines them all up allahu akbar and and he's in the arish and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as sheikh hasib mentioned the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is pleading with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his hands up in the air where they could see the 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 inner uh, the inner part of his entire arms in the eye. he's pleading with heaven pleading with heaven ya allah this is such a small group of people that if they are wiped out you will not be worshiped in the land ya allah ya allah crying out to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu he comes to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ya rasulullah you've been promised you've been promised and he consoles the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but the prophet the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is in such grief he's in such grief over his fear over who will die in this battle he loves his companions so much and he doesn't want any one of them to die in this battle and so ya allah ya allah calling upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect to protect ya allah and so he lines up the troops and he has a, his arrow and he's using his arrow to line them up and to keep them straight to keep them straight and to keep them um in form in formation and one of the companions as-sawad ibn ghazia or ghazia as-sawad ibn ghazia allahu akbar allahu akbar nayalak ya sawad nayalak ya sayyidina sawad the Prophet وسلم, when he comes with his arrow and he's putting he's pushing people forward and pushing people back, pushing people forward, pushing people back to so that the line is straight. And Sawad comes forward a little bit a little bit too forward and the Prophet وسلم, pushes him back with the with the with the arrow. And then he comes back and Sawad pushes him for himself forward again and the Prophet وسلم, pushes him back with the arrow. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. And the Prophet وسلم, announces, he says, Any one of you whom i have harmed ever let him take his harm let him take his 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 qisas his retribution from me this day any one whose wealth i have taken let him take his wealth from me today 
That's how grave that day was. And the Prophet ﷺ wants retribution. He wants to make sure that no one has anything on him. And so the Prophet he wants to make sure none of those companions who might die, who might fall dead that day, that they stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anything against the Prophet ﷺ, saying that the Prophet ﷺ did this or did that or took this or took that from me and I died without retribution. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to settle all affairs on that day. And so Sawad ibn Ghazya, he says, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, you've struck me, Ya Rasulullah. <laughs> Ya Rasulullah. You struck me, Ya Rasulullah, with this arrow of yours. And the companions are looking at him, what? What are you talking about? There's an army in front of you, a thousand men in front of you. And you're and you're you're seeking retribution for the Prophet tapping you with his arrow? I mean, is this are you serious? Are you serious right now? We have to deal with this. And so Sawad, and so the Prophet ﷺ said, then strike me as I have struck struck you. And so Sawad, uh, and so the Prophet ﷺ leaned down so that Sawad could actually take, take a whip and whip the Prophet ﷺ. Hashahu. Allah, like what are we dealing with right now? What are we dealing with? And so Sawad said, No, Ya Rasulullah, you struck me on my back. You struck me on my back because he's moving people forward and backwards. You struck me on my back, Ya Rasulullah, and you're still wearing your shirt. And so, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? He knew what he was trying to do, but the, the other companions didn't know. And can you imagine? Can you imagine what they must have felt at that time? And they didn't want any harm to come to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, but they knew that the Prophet was serious. And so the Prophet وسلم, removed his shirt so that Sawad could take his retribution. And Sawad fell on the Prophet وسلم, kissing the seal of prophethood, kissing it. And he and the Prophet وسلم, said, Ya Sawad, what are you doing? What are you doing? He said, Ya Rasulullah, you see what I see. You're witnessing what I witness here. He said, this may be the last day that I have with you. And I wanted that the last thing that my skin shall touch be your skin before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala claims my soul. That's the love of the companions for their messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the pledge that they took for him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On this day that we remember Badr, we renew our pledge to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we say with pride in our hearts and with gratitude for the sacrifice of Ahl Badr and Ahl Uhud and all of the battles that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fought with his companions. It's those companions that bought our Islam with their blood. They purchased your Islam with their blood on the battlefields of Mecca and Medina, on the battlefields of these sacred lands of revelation, some of them buried in Mecca, Umayyah, uh, Sumayya and Yasir, murdered, murdered. And Khadija, who purchased your Islam and mine with her wealth, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa ardaha, this was their sacrifice. This was their sacrifice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us so that we may be able to give gratitude for the gift of guidance through the sacrifice uh, of our days and nights. Uh, and we see that those that, that everything that we sacrifice, everything we endure, everything that we uh, suffer in this life, that it is nothing compared to what they have done before us. MashaAllah, Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud, that was uh, amazing, amazingly powerful, MashaAllah. Um, uh, he had me in tears, uh, subhanAllah, uh, multiple times during that talk. 
um, that was uh, that was beautiful. Just looking at the night before Badr, the morning of Badr, mashallah, we have some takbirs coming in and just reflections. Uh, we were sharing some of them during the talk as well. Mashallah, um, uh, subhanallah, jazakumullah khair, everyone. You can see here, uh, mashallah, Sheikh Hisham's enthusiasm brought tears to my eyes. May Allah bless him and his family, subhanallah. Yeah, it's amazing to think about the sacrifice of those at Badr and what they were willing to sacrifice. Uh, and just take a look at this, uh, everyone, real quick, uh, just to reiterate, you know, just the odds uh, that were stacked up against them. Uh, this is from one of our kids programs, actually. This slide I'm about to show you is from one of our uh, kids programs, but um, it's just important to, to note this as a visual. Um, before we get into the actual fight itself with uh, Dr. Shadi al Masri, take a look at this, guys. This is the this is the Meccan army. This is the Muslim army, uh, Quraysh versus uh, the Medinans. Subhanallah. Um, we're talking about a thousand to three hundred. You know, three to one, a three to one uh, odds here, and you know, barely equipped. The Muslims were barely equipped. Two horses uh, and seventy camels. Um, versus a hundred horses, uh, six hundred men with armor. Um, subhanallah, it's uh, amazing to think about this. And for those of you just wondering again where uh, Badr is, um, you know, this is a, a map here from the book Revelation. You can see uh, Badr here uh, is uh, in between Medina and uh, and Mecca, right? Uh, sorry, Medina, Yathrib. Uh, Yathrib is Medina and Mecca, right? So this is kind of a, a, an easier map to, to look at here with uh, with regards to to that, uh, inshallah. So we're we're really uh, we're really honored to have um, Dr. Shadi joining us. I'm gonna let me bring up my other slides here, uh, real quick. Um, and I'm really grateful to all of you who are using the hashtag uh, as well as you share um, uh, you know quotes and pictures from the program. Um, just to show you a couple of them here, someone here posting on their Instagram story and encouraging people to watch uh, to watch the the program. This is someone named I Create I Y E Create on uh, on um, Instagram, and Reshma, Sister Reshma, uh, encouraging people to watch here. She was with us on our recent Umrah trip, Mashallah. Um, and we have uh, someone, uh, someone, uh, Sister Asra, Sister Asra Beg watching with her cat as well, and someone posting the verses from the Quran that were recited, and Ikram posting a picture watching the webinar. So we encourage you all to do that, inshallah. We'll select one of you, actually a couple of you, to win some big prizes if you're using the hashtag and you tag Celebrate Mercy in your post. And after we hear from uh, Sheikh uh, Shadi, uh, we will select someone to win an Umrah trip as well. We'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later. Um, and just an update now, we are moving up in terms of the fundraising. Alhamdulillah, we're now at not at 15%, we're at 16% of our goal. So we're going up, but we still have a long way to go uh, in terms of the fundraising. And as I said, we are double matching today. There are donors who will double match. So if we can get to 20,000, inshallah, then we can go up uh, another 40K, uh, inshallah, that will be doubled. So donate at launchgood.com slash CM. That's do uh, donate launchgood.com slash CM, inshallah. Don't forget about the beautiful gifts that we send to those who make larger donations as well, inshallah. So let me now introduce uh, Dr. Shadi Al-Masri, who will be joining us now to talk about the fight itself, the battle itself, what happened during the actual fighting of Badr when both armies met face to face. Dr. Shadi Al-Masri was born and raised in New Jersey. He began studying at the age of 18. He traveled to a number of countries, including Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and Morocco. In addition to traditional learning, Dr. al Masri has received a master's from the George Washington University and a PhD from the University of London, SOAS. He went on to teach at several universities, including Yale, SOAS, Trinity College, Hartford Seminary, and Manhattanville College. And currently he serves as a scholar in residence at NBIC, which is an amazing community, mashallah, the New Brunswick Islamic Center in New Jersey. He's also the head and founder of Safina, Safina Society, an institution dedicated to the cause of traditional Islamic education in the West. And I highly recommend you check them out on YouTube, their podcasts, their classes, mashallah. So Dr. Shadi, 
Um, the, the, the stage is now yours. All righty. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Uh, I'm sure every one of us has uh, been in a situation in which uh, the moment in front of us is so huge that all we can think about is that moment and that the uh, butterflies are in our stomach. I'm sure everyone's got something like that uh, uh, on a smaller scale. It could be an exam. It could be a day in court. It could be... Um, uh, you got yourself in some kind of trouble. Well, you got to try to imagine that this situation here was probably the gravest and scariest moment that has ever befallen any group of people in our ummah. This moment is the foundation upon which the entire history and future of the ummah is going to be built. And as Sheikh Hisham Mahmoud said, they didn't intend any of this. Right. Nobody, uh, nobody intended uh, 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 that they're going to go out and have a battle and have a war, let alone be outnumbered three to one. So usually when something happens when there's so much pressure put down on people, something amazing happens. And we know that this happened previously with the time of Prophet Dawood salam, when the Bani Israel were getting so bullied by Goliath and his army, the Amalekites, Jalut and his people, the Amalekites, the Amalekites. They were getting bullied for generations now to do this. And finally, when they mustered up an army, that army was about to see something they never expected. They were about to experience something that they needed to be spiritually prepared for. So their spiritual preparation came in the form of a long march and this was an army of dozens of thousands. When they went there, they finally arrived at a river. And their prophet at the time said, no drinking from the river. So most of them drank and they all had to leave. In the same way that previously we just heard that the prophet said, he didn't prepare an army. He said, let's go and raid a caravan that has our, our money in it. And only a few came. In the same way, at that time, and the Prophet David, السلام, during that time, most of the army had to go back. They ended up only with, it is said, and it's not a firm number, 313 people in the army of David and Goliath. And the reason is that so much pressure was, was upon them is they're about to see miracles. And when you're about to see miracles, you don't go in a normal state. You have to go in a heightened spiritual state. Your spiritual state has to be so strong and that strength, you don't have to, the strength to attain it, but Allah has to make you attain it. So he has to suppress the nafs as much as possible so that your soul could fly and witness what you will never forget. And the Prophet ﷺ, many times he likened the battle of Badr is exactly to Islam what the David and Goliath's battle is to the history and the monarchy of the Bani Israel. And for that reason, the Prophet ﷺ imitated Sayyidina Dawood. He imitated the Prophet Dawood who threw a rock at Goliath. And the Quran has says, Those are the ones whom Allah had, had guided. So take an example from his guidance, from their guidance. So the Prophet at every turn looked and sought, what is the Bani Israel do? What did the, the, the prophets of the Bani Israel do? This is what I'm going to do. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, took some pebbles and he shouted, Shahat al Wuju, Shahat al Wuju, and he threw the pebbles at them. But this happened after another incident, too, in which the Prophet ﷺ proved something extremely, extremely important. During the meetings, right before the war, the, the battle, the Prophet ﷺ said, There are some men who have come out out of force, they did not want to come out. Amongst them are so-and-so and so-and-so and Al so -so, abbas my uncle. The father of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, he said, hold on a second. Or, sorry, the father of another man of the Muhajireen. He said, we're going to go out there and we're going to kill our own fathers, sons and brothers. And we're going to spare Al abbas 
Your uncle? This seems like it's nepotism. Favoring your own family. The Prophet turned to Omar ibn Khattab and he said, Oh, Omar, would you like to see the uncle of your Prophet being struck with a sword? So Omar ibn Khattab said to this man, Abu Hudayfa, be mindful of what you're saying. This is the command of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Hudayfa said, I had repented for this word that I uttered. I repented it for it for years until even after the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I asked Allah, take me, let me be killed as a martyr in repentance for that word that I said. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to show all of them. This is not nepotism at all. This was not favoritism, but it was true that Abbas did not want to fight. So one way to show this was that when the Quraysh brought their three sol soldiers out first, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought his closest family members. His closest family. Ubaidah ibn al-Harith, one of his oldest cousins. Hamza ibn Abd al-Muttalib, who was closer to age to the Prophet, but he was technically his uncle from his dad's side and his cousin from his mother's side. And he brought Ali ibn Abi Talib, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, who was the Prophet's cousin and essentially his foster son because he lived with him, he grew up with him. When, uh, when uh, Abu Talib fell on hard times, Sayyidina Ali became almost like his son. And they went and, the pro and all of the Sahaba were able to witness the Prophet is putting his family up first to do this fight. He's not protecting himself and his family and letting us all be killed. And that's the first lesson. And they took heart from this. And then the Prophet ﷺ went back again. And he made another long dua in which the Prophet had been given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him 1,000 angels turn by turn. What does that mean? That means the 1,000 angels are going to take part in this battle. And it is said the angels have not taken part in any battle. They only give sakina. But in this, they only give tranquility. But in this battle, they took part in the battle. And they had swords and they came on war horses and they had shields. Why would they have shields when they have angels? When they're angels, why would an angel need a shield? It's for the image because some of the Muslims, their spirituality was so high, they were able to see the angels and they saw them dressed like soldiers and Jibreel in a yellow turban. Another verse says 3,000 and another verse says 5,000 means they were sent in waves. When something is sent in waves, it gives you more sakina. One. And a little bit later, another group. And a little bit later, another group of angels. 5,000 angels in total. One man from the Bedouin around the area of Bedr. He sat witnessing him and his friend. And lo and behold, they heard coming right from behind them a troop of neighing horses to the point that his friend had a heart attack and died. And he said, it must be that his heart burst because we got so startled to hear horses coming from the sky behind us. And the Sahaba proceeded to witness miracle upon miracle. You don't witness miracles for no, from nothing. They have faced so much pressure. They thought they were all going to die. So their iman and their spirituality was so honed in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to witness things that they've never seen before. Al-Kasha is a Sahabi. His sword broke. And he happened to be next to the messenger. The Prophet ﷺ gave him a wooden club, like a tree branch. He was fighting with the wooden club. And then, in a moment, he looked. He found the wooden club was a sword. It had transformed into a sword without him even realizing it. Another Sahabi was chasing down one of the Quraysh when the Quraysh was on a faster horse, uh, was, was running faster than he could catch up with, and he couldn't catch up with him. But lo and behold, he found the head of that Quraishi beheaded without him even touching him. It was from the Malaika. Some of the Sahaba were able to see the Malaika. Some of them were able to hear them. And some of them, but all of them were able to feel them. Auf was a Sahabi that wanted to go out in place of Hamza and in place of Ali. And the Prophet ﷺ, the Quraysh said, no, you're from the Ansar. We have no issue with you. Go back. We want to fight the Quraysh. So Auf said to the messenger, peace be upon him, tell me, does our Lord laugh? And the prophet said, yes. He said, what makes him laugh? He said, when a man goes into the army, into the battle without his chain mail. 
Laughter of Allah means, as Ibn Hajar said, his mercy, his forgiveness, and his generosity all in one moment. And he said, if that's the case, he took his chain mail off, threw it, and ran into the battle. When the Sahaba saw this, half of war is all feelings of strength. The Sahaba are looking, and they're seeing this man running with no mail. All of a sudden, the hearts of the believers were filled. So much so that even some people were not even Muslims. And they saw this. And one man said, what's happening here? They said, one man claims to be a prophet. And his enemies are fighting. And he says, what does this prophet promise? He says, prophet, paradise if you fight in this battle. He said, in that case, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. He threw his dates and he ran in. And so Allah gives victory by Sakina. The Sakina. And it was a complete rout. The Quraysh did not have any chance. And we close with did not have any chance at all except for one area that the angels had not gone. And that area had Abu Jahl in it, and Abu Jahl fought until he was killed. He was knocked down, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud came and said to him, Abu Jahl said, put his foot on his neck. Abu Jahl said, what happened? He said, we have routed you. He has said, you've risen high, you little shepherd. Tell Muhammad I'm his enemy in life, and I'm his enemy in death. Then Abdullah bin Mas'ud had thought, let me take him as a captive in front of the Prophet. No, there's no point for this man. Sliced off his head. Then he took it back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, the head of Abu Jahl, dragging it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, wasn't it Abu Jahl who hit you in your ear when you recited the Quran in pub, in, at, the, at, the, at the Kaaba? He said, yes. And your ear was bleeding? Yes. And you were crying about it? Yes. He said, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you an ear for an ear and the head is extra. And the Sahaba, the levity and the pressure released from them to a degree that it was a long celebration afterwards. Sallallahu barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, thank you so much to Dr. Shadi, subhanAllah. Um, beautiful, uh, beautiful explanation and recounting of the actual battle and the fighting that took place. And the comments we're getting are just amazing, subhanAllah. Someone is saying here, this is really the, the this is really the, the, the point. <laughs> the, this is proof that all things are possible with Allah's grace and mercy. All things are possible with Allah's grace and mercy. And someone's saying they woke up to watch this from Indonesia. Masha, we have people from a lot of different countries. You mentioned them earlier in the uh, in the in the in the webinar. Someone is saying here, thanking Sheikh Hisham for his message earlier. May Allah grant you the opportunity to be with him in the end of time. Amin. And I can feel the immense love you have for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Subhanallah, amazing, amazing. Um, someone else said here, uh, waves of inspiration and comfort are reaching out across the oceans and continents. Jazakumullah khair. And some, and she said also, or he said, I'm not sure who this is, but I'm so grateful for these programs that make me feel connected to the community in the solitude of my house, alone with the cat, but not lonely. Alone with the cat, but not lonely. Alhamdulillah. You know, and a lot of people, unfortunately, are lonely in Ramadan. They don't get invited for iftars. They don't get invited to programs. They're not near a community. Uh, and we hope that, you know, through these programs that we are providing some community to you, inshallah, some community to you. Uh, inshallah. Um, we are about to bring to the stage um, Sheikh Aisha Prime and then uh, inshallah uh, um, Dr. Tamara Gray and then we're going to have a beautiful recitation with our dear brother Sinan Hafiz where we're going to make dua for each and every one of the names of those companions who are at Bedr and we want to encourage you all when we do that that you play it on your loudspeakers you know we want the names of uh, those at Bedr to, to, to echo throughout your home, inshallah, and it will be a source of mercy and barakah because these are uh, these are men who are beloved to Allah, are beloved to Allah. As I said before, um, where would we be today if Badr went the other way? Where would we be today if Badr went the other way? SubhanAllah. And I gave you guys this update about our fundraiser, SubhanAllah. I said that we were at 16% of our goal. And right after I sent you this picture, 
I got a text message. I just got a text message from a family. It's a beautiful, blessed family. They were actually with us on our Umrah trip. I did not expect this at all. I did not expect this at all. But we got a beautiful text message from a family uh, that said, we are sending a check in the mail for $10,000. We are sending a check in the mail for $10,000. So we are only, uh, I think, maybe $5,000 away, $5,000 away from hitting the $20,000 goal so that we can double match today. And I did not expect this, subhanAllah, I did not expect this $10,000 donation, but may Allah bless this family and may Allah uh, bless them for their sacrifice. And this is all about sacrifice today. Badr is about what can we give to the ummah? What can we give to the ummah to pass this deen forward uh, to the next generations, inshallah. So we are maybe about 75% of the way there to 20,000. And inshallah, I hope you all will consider closing that $5,000 gap and go to launchgood.com slash cm to do that. And don't forget, we do have a fund that is zakat eligible. It's part of the, the goal, and you can read about what that is and how we're... We actually, we took 100 people to Jerusalem, Mecca, and Medina, and about one-third of that group uh, was there based on scholarships. They could not afford the trip. They were zakat eligible. So we brought some individuals on our Umrah trip that may, you know, possibly... For the rest of their life, they may never afford to go to Mecca, Medina, and Jerusalem. And we were learning the seerah throughout the trip with great scholars like Sheikh Aisha Prime, like Sheikh Isha Mahmoud, Sheikh Mendez, Dalia Mugahid was with us as well. So the scholarship fund is helping a lot of people to attend some of our retreats, our conferences, our trips, alhamdulillah. And you can learn more about that at launchgood.com slash cm. And don't forget that we actually have really beautiful gifts for those who make larger donations as well. And some of these gifts are worth like $500 or more, uh, inshallah. So that was some amazing news that I just got. Um, and subhanAllah, you know, this is a day of Badr, it's a day of Barakah. And uh, inshallah, um, after we hear from Aisha Prime, we will take a couple of minutes and select someone to win that Umrah trip. But I don't want to delay the program any further. And I will now introduce our dear teacher, Sheikh Aisha Prime, who we were blessed with for 17 days. We were blessed to walk in the footsteps of Sheikh Aisha Prime as we walked in the footsteps of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we walked in the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jerusalem, in Mecca, in Medina, on a beautiful trip. Some of you were on that trip with us. We'd love to hear from you. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, let us know if you joined us with Sheikh Aisha Prime on that trip that we just took to Jerusalem, Mecca, and Medina. Let us know and let us know how it impacted your life. Um, Sheikh Aisha Prime became Muslim more than 20 years ago. She studied at the Fajr Institute in Egypt. She studied at an Islamic university for women in Yemen. And mashallah, she served as the director of women's affairs at Dar al Hijra Islamic Center in Virginia. She's co founder and executive director of Baraka Inc., an organization committed to training Muslim women in the traditional Islamic sciences. And she is a proud wife and mother of three children. And she is going to talk about the aftermath, the direct aftermath of the Battle of Badr. And uh, let's bring her to the stage right now. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Aisha. Wa alaikum, Salaam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. First, I just want to congratulations to celebrate mercy on this program again, subhanAllah. In addition to, I just want to thank all of our teachers, Sheikh Hisham, Sheikh Shadi Masri for just, mashallah, the inspiring stories that, you know, that we gain all the lessons from uh, the, the day of, from the battle of Badr and all that happened as a result, subhanAllah. And so uh, Sheikh Shadi, when he, when he gets to the end, there's this moment, right, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has then at the end of the battle, he, he tells the companions to spread out, right? And as they're spreading out over the battlefield, they're assessing, right? They're assessing, of course, their own loss, as well as they're assessing the loss of the Quraysh, right? The leaders of the Quraysh, like basically let's assess the battles. But there's specifically one that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is looking for, and that's Abu Jahl. I, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described him as the, the Pharaoh of his time. And so, subhanAllah, there, before that, during the battle, uh, 
that uh, subhanAllah, uh, when Abu Jahl was like on the battlefield, there were two young boys, right? And when people saw these young boys, they wondered like, what are they doing on this battlefield? What are they doing in this battle? And they were from the Ansar. And so they had asked another one of the companions, Sahab of the Prophet وسلم, like, can you describe for me who is Abu Jahl? Can you point him out for me? For I've heard how he insults our Prophet. I've heard how he insults our Nabi Muhammad وسلم. And so he and his brother, uh, when they get the description of Abu Jahl, they actually take off after him. And subhanAllah, people are amazed at the fierceness and the courage and the bravery, of course, of these two young boys. And so Mu'ad, the younger of them, or sorry, the, the elder of them pulls him down, pulls Abu Jahl actually off of his horse. If you can imagine, right, as Sheikh Shadi had mentioned in terms of the energy and the love of the Prophet that gives these young boys the level of strength, that here they are, right, pulling down literally a giant of their time. And so he, he pulls him down off of his horse and his younger brother uh, jumps on his back and they, they take Abu Jahl, subhanAllah, to the ground. And as they take him to the ground, they just like beat him up, of course, ferociously. And subhanAllah, they actually, uh, you know, make sure that he's, that they just lay him out until they believe that he's dead. Right? And subhanAllah, they go on to continue uh, to fight the battle. So now in this moment, when the Prophet وسلم, and he's assessing the battlefield, he asks specifically, what about Abu Jahan? What's the case of Abu Jahl? And the Sahaba began to report back to the Prophet وسلم, about these two young brothers. But when they find the body of Abu Jahl, he still got a little bit of breath in him. Like he's, he's, he's dying, subhanAllah. Like they surely dealt him a fatal blow. But at the same time, he has like a little bit of breath in him. And one of the companions sits on his chest. And as he sits on his chest, uh, Abu Jahl actually asks him about the Prophet Muhammad وسلم. So he tells him, of course, he's alive and well. And so he he then, you know, Abu Jahl at that moment, you, you begin to think like maybe, maybe there's a glimmer of hope that he might say, okay, right in this moment, I testify that he's the messenger of Allah. But in this moment, he actually confirms his disbelief and affirms his belief in the religion of his ancestors. And so Subhanallah, and actually curses the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then finally, that Sahaba who's sitting on his chest deals him the final blow uh, that actually cuts the life of Abu Jahan. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reaches his body and finds him, Subhanallah, finally dead and gone, he said, This was the worst tyrant of our time. Like he was even worse than Fir Fir'aun because at least when Fir'aun right, was in that last moment, just even to save himself, he at least acknowledged, right, the fact of Allah. But in this case, Abu Jahl took it to the end, right? He took insulting of the Prophet, of the Messenger of Allah, to the end, to his last breath, right? And of course, denying the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his last breath. And so uh, the Prophet والسلام, further during, you know, during the assessment realizes that there are over 70 of the Quraysh who have passed away in this particular battle. And there are 14 shuhada, 14 that are on their way into Jannah. And of course, the Prophet وسلم, and his companions rejoice. They rejoice at the win. Umayma, who used to torture Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu ta'ala an, has also been killed. And so there is literally just this, this, this feeling of being elated, this feeling of victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has heard their cries and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted them clearly a manifest victory. So after this, the Prophet and had become his way, uh, remained in the particular area, continued to camp out after uh, the battlefield, after the battle was over for three days, giving the opportunity, of course, to sort out the spoils of war, as well as to sort out what was going to happen to the prisoners, what were going to happen to those who had been captured, the captives. And subhanAllah, he consulted with Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, and Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. And as he consulted with them, Abu Bakr had the opinion that we should ransom them. Right? So he said to the Prophet 
alayhi salatu wasalam, there are many people in Mecca who, you know, who love them, who, you know, uh, who would be looking forward to them. And so as a result, let's ransom them, Ya Rasulullah. And Umar ibn al-Khattab, he had the opinion of truly Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala, and which was a much more firmer opinion in addition to his belief was that we should not ransom them, Ya Rasulullah, that these have these are the ones who are the enemies of Allah, that they are the enemies to the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, and they don't deserve to live. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, being the merciful one that he was, uh, began to just look at this situation and say, you know, subhanAllah, what we'll do is we will ransom this. He favored the opinion at that time. He favored the opinion of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an. And so that's exactly what they did. They sent the captives back to the Quraysh, to the Meccans, and gave them the opportunity to ransom them. Now, it just so happened that one of the captives of war was Abu al-As ibn Rabia. And Abu al-As ibn Rabia was the son of... Uh, was the son-in-law of the Prophet وسلم, He was actually married to his daughter Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha alayha sana. He was married to his, uh, his daughter Zainab. And so she, when Zainab, the daughter of the Prophet وسلم, uh, heard the news, right? She was actually elated. She was so happy that the Muslims had won the battle for she had converted to Islam, of course, years before that. However, at the same time, she knew that her husband was going to be a captive because it was actually her husband who fought against the Messenger of Allah والسلام, in the Battle of Badr. And so, subhanAllah, in this moment, of course, she has a decision to make. And so what she does, as other people are sending off, you know, their spoil, they're sending off ransom things that they could be able to get their family members back. She knows, subhanAllah, that her husband, he comes from a wealthy family. He's well-to-do. He's a noble. Uh, she, he actually is the son of Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala, and her mother's sister. And so she knows he comes from a wealthy family. He's going to be well. But what can we do? Right? What can we give in order to ransom him? And so she actually takes a necklace. Uh, that was given to her by her mother on her wedding day, our beloved mother Khadija radiallahu ta'ala an. And as they're sending back their ransom to the messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, and he's sorting through it, he finds the necklace of his beloved alayhi salatu wasalam, that was given to his daughter Zainab. And immediately when he lays eyes on Khadija radiallahu ta'ala an's necklace, of course, all the memories become flooding right just begin to flood his mind and flood his heart until his eyes well up with tears and the prophet والسلام, remembering of course that this necklace used to drape the neck of his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala and then has a moment and goes to his companions and says what if we like give him back right and give the necklace back to Zainab. Can we send him back without ransom? He doesn't just do it on his own. He actually consults the other companions and subhanAllah, they agree. They allow uh, that to happen. And so he returns this beautiful necklace back to Zainab uh, alayhi salam. And subhanAllah, that at this point, Abu al-As is given without ransom. He's returned back to her without ransom. However, he consults with him and he says, I'm giving this back to Zainab. You will return her to me, meaning that you will allow her to leave Mecca and to migrate to Medina for she had been uh, withheld from being able to do that. And so he agreed. That was the exchange. SubhanAllah, he gave the necklace back and he agreed to allow Zainab, SubhanAllah, to migrate to Medina. And so, subhanAllah, this should have been a very joyous occasion, a very happy occasion uh, that Zainab, subhanAllah, at this point is four months pregnant. And as she's pregnant, she, subhanAllah, is on her way to migrate to Medina and knowing, subhanAllah, the, the Quraysh army, knowing that she's the daughter of the Prophet, والسلام, literally attack her. SubhanAllah, there is someone who is with her to guard her and protect her. 
uh, and and you know to to help. And they initially fight off majority. They fought off majority of the the attack. But Subhanallah, again, uh, she was attacked as she was on her way. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent Zaid ibn Hadith uh, in order to receive her. She was attacked again and fell off the horse. Subhanallah, and struck uh, struck her head. And actually was also hit by an arrow. And so when she was hit by the arrow, as well as uh, struck her head, she lost this baby. And subhanAllah, this became, a, she was actually returned back for a period of healing until she was actually able to, to reach the messenger of Allah, Sam. Sometime later, subhanAllah, uh, actually on a trade mission, Abu al-As, her husband, Abu al-As uh, ibn Arabiya, actually came to the Prophet وسلم, and took his shahada. After the Prophet وسلم, helped him again, right? After helping him again, then he finally announced his shahada to the Messenger of Allah. Now that subhanAllah, that this is, it's seeming that things have calmed down. The Messenger of Allah والسلام, has taken care of all of the captives and he is returning to Medina. He immediately steps into the home of Uthman ibn Affan, uh, ta'ala an, who at that time was excused from the Battle of Badr because he was taking care of the daughter of the Prophet وسلم, Rukaya. And Rukaya, subhanAllah, had actually fallen sick pre uh, prior to the battle. And Uthman ibn, the Prophet وسلم, ordered him to stay and to take care of her. Once the Messenger of Allah وسلم, reached the home of Uthman ibn Affan, an, the news came that subhanAllah, his daughter Rukaya had actually passed away during the Battle of Badr. That as subhanAllah, uh, that they were gaining victory on this side, that as some of the shuhada souls were on their way to being green birds in the courtyard of Jannah, the soul of Rukhaya was also departing from her body and fleeing to her Lord. And subhanAllah, of course, there is this feeling of victory of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of being victorious of a brother. Yet at the same time, he faces this grief uh, from the loss of his daughter. And yet the Prophet والسلام, he buries her, subhanAllah. He is uh, he's the one who actually lowers her into the grave and prays her janazah. And so what we learn about the Messenger of Allah والسلام, from the Battle of Badr and all the things that happened as a result of that and after that is his level of not only courage, but his level of steadfastness, his level of always remaining firm no matter the circumstances, whether it's victory, subhanAllah, or death, that we find the Prophet والسلام, being our greatest leader, our greatest teacher, our greatest guide, and teaching us the what it means to have true spiritual ascension. Jazakum ala khayyan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikha Aisha Prime, for that beautiful uh, story, stories actually about the direct, uh, the conclusion and the aftermath of Badr, inshallah, and the um, direct aftermath. And subhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu getting no rest, getting no rest from difficulties and trials and tribulations, even at the height of victory and celebration of the miraculous victory at Badr, he comes home to finding out that his daughter had passed away, subhanAllah, and he's also reminded of the loss of his uh, beloved Khadija, radiallahu anha, even as they were trying to ransom prisoners, uh, subhanAllah. So um, it's amazing how much you know sacrifice and struggle that our beloved Prophet, sallallahu endured on our behalf, on our behalf, subhanAllah. And we want, again, before we bring uh, Sheikha Tamara to the stage, we want to thank again our three sponsors who helped sponsor the webinar. And everyone, please say Amin to their dua. Fatima Martin, who's asking that Allah grants healing to her father and all her family members, a complete healing of hearts, bodies, and souls. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Someone who wanted their name to remain anonymous, making dua for the Palestinian people and for Al Aqsa Mosque, uh, the masjid that we just visited. Uh, SubhanAllah, a few uh, weeks ago. May Allah protect all oppressed people and restore the Muslim Ummah as a source of light, guidance, peace, and protection. 
and the Hajj Ahmed family, the Hajj Ahmed family. Uh, may Allah, uh, on behalf of Dr. Abdullah Hajj Ahmed, please pray for Ab Dr. Abdullah Hajj Ahmed of uh, Mare, Syria. I hope I'm pronouncing the town or city correctly. Allah knows how many he helped as a doctor in a camp in Azaz, Syria. Sadly, he passed away this January in Turkey. May Allah give his family ease and success, and may he give Dr. Abdullah Jannat al Firdos, uh, inshallah. And if you'd like to sponsor any of these webinars, please uh, email info at celebratemercy.com. If your family would like to sponsor a day of Ramadan webinars, it's a great way to support Celebrate Mercy. We are hosting, as you can see here on this flyer, four webinars every single day. Today is actually five webinars. Uh, SubhanAllah, we have a kids program coming up later today as well. And we are now at 17% of our goal. Uh, we are four, I just learned we are $4,000 away from hitting that $20,000 mark so that we can uh, activate that double match, inshallah. So we're only $4,000 away. And I want everyone to at least contribute something. And here's, a, here's something I, I recommend. Here's an idea. When you make your donation, and if you've already made your donation, make this dua. Make this dua that through the blessing of this sadaqah, through the blessing of this good deed, uh, gather me on the day of judgment with the people of Badr. Gather me with the companions of Badr. Gather me with those who sacrifice at Badr. Sacri you're sacrificing with your wealth. Make dua that Allah places you with those who sacrificed before us for his sake, uh, especially those at Badr. So, and make a donation and ask Allah to give the blessings of the reward, duplicate it for those at Badr. Give it on behalf of those who fought at Badr, inshallah. Make that your intention. And inshallah, that will reach them in their graves. And that will reach them and you'll see as a gift to them on the Day of Judgment. And it won't diminish any of your own rewards, inshallah. So we want to encourage you all to do that. Um, we are going to now bring Sheikha Tamara to the stage. I know we mentioned that we're going to select someone to win the Umrah trip, but I don't want, out of respect for Dr. Tamara's time, I want to bring her to the stage, inshallah. And right after she's done, we will select the Umrah trip winner, and then we'll have a beautiful recitation of all of the names of those at Badr and a dua for them, inshallah. And that will fill your day. It will fill your home. Inshallah, that will fill your heart with barakah. We've seen amazing things happen just by mentioning their names, uh, subhanAllah. And even today on this webinar, I can see the doors of mercy you know, opening, mashallah, the doors of generosity, and the doors of giving opening, subhanAllah, during this webinar. It's, it's really beautiful to see Masha'Allah. Um, we had someone who, before I introduce Sheikh Tamar, I want to say we had someone, Masha'Allah, who said that, you know, look at these comments, what sacrifices our beloved Prophet made, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so we can practice this beautiful religion in peace, this beautiful uh, religion in peace, SubhanAllah. Uh, and someone saying what an honor it is to be part of the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Someone else who said, Celebrate Mercy is the only Muslim community I have. So I'm very grateful for all these programs. Uh, subhanAllah. And Sister Rashida was saying there was not a dry high, eye in the house when Sheikha Aisha made her du'as on her blessed trip in Jerusalem, Mecca, and Medina. May Allah preserve her, uh, subhanAllah. And, you know, others talking about Sheikha Aisha Prime here. And someone else who said, this is true KK and KK and the cat. I am also in my senior apartment alone. Iftar from my granddaughter will be delivered to me, alhamdulillah. May Allah remove any mistakes and grant her blessings now and in the hereafter. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Beautiful. So I'm now going to introduce uh, Sheikha Tamara Gray, uh, inshallah, to our audience. Um, Dr. Tamara Gray is a founder of Rabata, an organization dedicated to promoting positive cultural change through creative educational experiences. She has a doctorate in leadership from the University of St. Thomas, and she spent 20 years, 20 years studying the traditional and classical Islamic sciences, Quran and Arabic in Damascus, Syria. She's an instructor of many subjects at Ribat. She's an author and translator of several books, including Joy Jots, it's an amazing book, and Project Lena. She sits on the uh, Colle Collegeville Institute's Interreligious Fellows Program. She's a, a faculty and council member of the Islamic Seminary of America. She teaches at the United Theological Seminary of the Twin Cities. She's a senior fellow at the Yaqeen Institute, and she recently joined the Fifth Council of North America. MashaAllah, she is a, a mother of three, a grandmother of two, an avid reader and lover of cultures, people, coffee, and food. 
Uh, mashallah. So now let's go ahead and bring to the stage uh, Dr. Tamara Gray. Uh, and inshallah, Dr. Tamara, I hope you're doing okay with, without the coffee in the daytime, inshallah. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I have no problem as long as I get it at night. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. And ameen to all of the beautiful du'as that have been said today. SubhanAllah. What a blessing to be here. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This program has linked Badr to three really important concepts. One is sincerity, another is sacrifice, and the third is solidarity. I think that it's really important for us to really sink our, sink our teeth into these three concepts and see what we can learn and take out of Badr so we can leave this program being the people who are sincere, the people who are ready to sacrifice, the people who are ready to find their own Badr and in solidarity living in the shelter of one another. So sincerity is a concept where we are really concerned with the state of our heart. And we see with the Prophet Sallallahu in this beautiful image, and I imagine it, and I think about they are there and there's fear and there's tension and there are few and the others are many. And this is new for them. And the Prophet Sallallahu what does he do? He spends the entire night in prayer. Ali radiallahu an says, every single one of us slept, except for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was under a tree and he was praying and weeping until Fajr. Tears. You know, sometimes I think about tears and how many tears I have shed in my life. Think with me for a moment in the world of sincerity. How many tears have you spent how many tears have you shed in your life? If they were to be filled, if we were to fill vials of our tears, one vial for the tears we sent or we spent for matters of this dunya, and one vial for the tears we spent for matters of the akhirah, for matters of the deen, for matters of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Look at your own vials. Which ones are bigger? When we see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah, on the night of Badr, with his hands up, calling out in prayer and dua and tears, alone to Allah Azza wa Jal, it teaches us something really important about sincerity. That sincerity begins with Siddiq, and siddiq and sincerity begin with pleading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we need, for where we are, for where we're standing in the beginning, the precipice of whatever it is our badr in front of us. Whatever our badr is in front of us. We've heard today heartwarming and heart-wrenching stories of badr. And we will hear their names of those who were there when we were not. And they were volunteer. This wasn't a required battle. They were, they were throwing themselves into it. That sincerity and the Prophet them, in pulling them into that space, spent the night in prayer and calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in the days of prayer. We're going to move now into sacrifice. But as you start to plan your own badr, spend these 10 days, these beautiful, these, these 10 days of these 10 days of weeping, these 10 days of intensity, turning to Allah and asking for whatever it is that you need. Badr. You need a better. I need a better. We all need a better. The third, the second concept that we are talking about today is sacrifice. Not a word very common in this capitalist society. When we think about sacrifice, we think about, I'm not sure, what do we think about? A diet, maybe? Most people start diets on Monday and by Wednesday they're done. The, the, the concept of sacrifice is something really new for our culture and our society. And maybe we wonder if it's really worth it in this sort of taking care of the self rhetoric that we're in. We wonder, wait, why should I sacrifice for something? There is a longer story, but one of the events that happened much later, one of the people of Badr, he did something not good, pretty serious. In fact, it was almost 
betrayal. And Umar radiallahu an was infuriated and saw even danger in that. And the Prophet and he wanted, he wanted, that's it, you know, Umar radiallahu an, just this. The Prophet paused him and said to him, Oh, oh, Umar, or innahu qad shahid. Shahida, Shahida, Badra. He witnessed Badr. He was there at Badr. Ma yudrika la'alla Allah an yakun qad attala'a ala ahli al-Badr faqal. How do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't looked upon the people of Badr and said, ma shi'tum, sorry, a'malu ma shi'tum, do as you wish, faqad ghafartu lakum, for I have forgiven you. Today, with the lessons of Badr, we are given an opportunity. We are given an opportunity to recognize that with great effort, sacrifice of our comfort, sacrifice of what is normative in our day, with great effort, we can have our own Badr. And all of us need the Badr. This Badr was so great. It's like this person who had done something horrible later. Oh, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, how do you know that Allah hasn't forgiven him for all things because of being at Badr? This is like a person who gives a kidney away. You give a kidney to someone. If you have someone's kidney and that person doesn't invite you to their wedding, you're like, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. You're like, okay, never mind. This is uh, the effort. What is? What, what can you equate it to? <clears throat> And Badr is this effort for Allah, for this deen. What is your Badr? If you are suffering with addictions, maybe your Badr is fighting against them and overcoming them. <coughs> I'm so sorry, excuse me. If you are a person ready to contribute to community, maybe your Badr is standing up and offering your time, your treasure, your talent to this community. What is your Badr? What is it that you will bring all of your effort forward for Allah? And the reward for that, inshallah, with full giving and not holding back, the reward, inshallah, for that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and acceptance. Which brings us to the third lesson of today, which is solidarity. I like to say, we must learn how to live in the shelter of one another. It's a solidarity. But there's also something to be said. As in that very beginning of the battle, the Prophet ﷺ called three names forward. These are three names that we know. I'm sure you, you went over them already. Maybe I wasn't here. But there were three names. Hamza, Ubaidah, and Ali. These are people who are close. In that first duel, know if you have been called forth to duty, if you've been called forth for Allah, if you've been called forth to attend something, to volunteer for something, to pray at night, to attend atikaf, to read extra Quran, if you've been called forth, you are of the close. Be of the close in shelter of one another. Look around you, stand forth and then look around you and see who can you pull in? Who of our community can we pull in? Who are the people that are that are sitting on the peripheral, looking in, wishing they could be there, wishing they could be at Badr, wishing they could be part of this global and community effort to bring people back to the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It takes bravery and it there is in the very early moments of Badr it takes a person like Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad when the Prophet sallallahu was reaching out and asking you know what do you guys think what do you think Abu Bakr said something it was, it was beautiful but it wasn't what the Prophet sallallahu was looking for Naqdad said something that then Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad stood up and said, as though Ya Rasulullah, you, are, you want our opinion. He is of the Ansar. They were new. They were new. As we call out to every new heart and every heart is new in Ramadan. Let's listen 
to Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh as we think about solidarity. He said to them, he said to the Prophet proceed wherever you wish. Reside where you wish. Connect with who you wish. Cut off relations with who you wish. Make peace with who you wish. Go to war with who you wish. Take of your wealth what you wish. Take, give, take of our wealth what you wish. Give us what you wish. Verily what you take pleases us more than what you leave. Whatever you decide, our decision is your decision. And our affairs follow yours. This is what we have to say today on this day of Badr. Ya Rasulullah, call upon us as you wish. We see your sunnah. We will follow it. Ya Rasulullah, what do you ask of us? We see how you lived. We will live this way. Ya Rasulullah, if you were ask us, if you were to ask us to throw ourselves into the sea, Ya Rasulullah, what do you wish of us? This thing that is hard for me. Ya Rasulullah, I stand in solidarity with you and with all of the early companions. And I say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and I follow you and I fulfill it. And I will do my best to throw myself into the sea of Sunnah, into the sea of Sunnah, into the way of Rasulullah in solidarity with you, such that we can be, I'm making dua these nights. It's an, I'm a bit shy in this dua that I'm making. I'm saying, Ya Allah, though we don't deserve it, we're not anywhere near that space of being like the companions or like the Ummahat al mu'minin. Forgive us, Ya Allah, for this dua. But as we see the great need of the Ummah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to make us like or make us the companions of this time, the companions of Rasulullah. And for today's event, let's say, Ya Allah, though we are not in deserving of this status in any way, and though we have not brought forth any sign that we are deserving of it, but Ya Allah, make us today's people of Badr. Let us be of those who truly stand and come forth as the people of Badr did, and be of the people of sincerity, sacrifice, and solidarity. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad. Amin. Amin. Make us the Badris of our time. Amin. Amin, Ya Rabbil what Alameen. What a powerful recap of the three themes for today's program. Sincerity, sacrifice, solidarity with Sheikha Tamara Gray. SubhanAllah. Uh, so many comments coming in. Everyone is saying, Amin. Everyone type in, Amin. MashaAllah. Lina Kahawash saying, I want to be a companion of Dr. Tamara Gray. <laughs> MashaAllah. I want to be a companion of Dr. Tamara Gray. MashaAllah. SubhanAllah. Yes. I mean, we should all really, she is a, she's our teacher. She really is our teacher. MashaAllah. She's a teacher to, to both the women and the men. To both the women and the men. MashaAllah. And we should all, MashaAllah, learn about more about her books and her classes and Rabata and take advantage of, you know, learning with her, inshallah, inshallah. Um, so we have, uh, you know, someone who said, thank you, Sheikha Tamra, for a great connection of Badr to our real life challenges and given us another perspective to look at the battle of Badr. You made me think of how well I can also connect it. MashaAllah. May Allah reward you and grant you an honorable tongue on the service of his deen and preserve for a long time to come. Uh, someone else said, such a powerful statement. We all need a better. We all need a better. And subhanAllah, you know, I wanted to, to share some good news that the same family, the same family who pledged $10,000 to help us get to $20,000 today, they texted me again. This same family, when we're talking about sacrifice, when I, when I said that give with the intention that you be resurrected with the people of better, Give with the intention that Allah grants them a copy of your blessing and reward with your donation. Uh, they texted and said, with that intention, we will give another $5,000. We will give another $5,000. This same family, this was unexpected, by the way, unexpected, subhanAllah. Badr is a day of miracles. Badr is a day of openings. And now, subhanAllah, it looks like we did hit that $20,000 goal, uh, and that will be matched now but we're still only 20% to our greater goal for Ramadan. So if you're watching the recording, please continue to support 
this organization because we're only 20% to our goal, but we are now about 55% or 60%, uh, you know, we're about 55% finished with Ramadan, but we're only at about 20% of our fundraising goal so far. So we want, inshallah, everyone to still donate, consider donating your cryptocurrency, consider giving zakat to the scholarship fund, and we do have beautiful gifts as well, inshallah. We're about to bring to the stage our dear brother, uh, Sinan Hafiz. Oh yeah, and don't forget, sponsoring the webinars. It's a huge, huge way to support Celebrate Mercy. You're offsetting our webinar costs. So consider having your family sponsor the webinars, maybe on behalf of a loved one who has passed away, inshallah. We are about to select a winner who's going to get a free trip to, the, to Mecca and Medina, inshallah, with Celebrate Mercy. Later, after the recitation of the names, we're going to select a winner for some prizes of those who have been using the hashtag, inshallah. We are going to bring to the stage also shortly Sinan Hafiz, an amazing reciter of the Quran and singer of Nasheeds. Um, and he is going to, mashallah, beautifully recite the names of those at Badr and the scholar, remember, the scholars say when you when you even say the names of the pro the prophets and the righteous and the awliya, the people that Allah loves, mercy descends like rain. It's like mercy is falling from the heavens just by mentioning names like Abu Bakr and Omar and Ali and Hamza radiallahu anhum. Their their names bring barakah. Uh, so as the names are going to be recited and a du'a for them. Turn up your speakers. Turn up your speakers. Let it let it resound through your home and in your hearts. Inshallah, the people of Badr, the people uh, who sacrifice so much, the people, as Dr. Tamaras just said, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, told Omar, told Omar, how do you know that the people of Badr have not been forgiven for anything they do after Badr? Because of the sacrifice they made at Badr, how do you know that they're not forgiven for anything else they do for the rest of their lives? How do you know that? Because Omar wanted to kill this person because he made a big mistake. And the Prophet ﷺ said, how do you know that they're not forgiven for the rest of their lives? Because of what they sacrificed at Badr. And they were willing to sacrifice at Badr. And we pray that Allah gives us an opportunity to sacrifice for the deen, to sacrifice for him in a way that it forgives all of our sins, inshallah, all of our sins. This deen is about sacrifice. We have to think about how we will pass this deen on to our children, to our community, how we will take care of newcomers to the deen. How do we ensure that no one feels lonely in this community uh, of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa How do we expand this community of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and bring more people into the light and the love of Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So these are things we have to think about. That's how Badr is connected today. Every generation needs a Badr. Every generation needs the sacrifice for the sake of the next generations, inshallah. So we're now going to show you a list of names. These are people who, mashallah, participated in our second contest in Ramadan. They helped with volunteer efforts. They helped with some fundraising, mashallah. And this is a list of all of their names, mashallah. Um, they helped raise about $7,000 for Celebrate Mercy. Um, there, there were 25 people in the contest, 16 of them qualified, mashallah. Um, some of them have their names repeated multiple times in the raffle. Uh, and the one who raised the most money and who did the best in this contest, her name is Lena Qasim. Lena Qasim. May Allah reward her and all those who did an amazing effort, mashallah. We have Lina Qasim, Maryam Khalid, Rebecca Rafiq, Karen Khawaja, Rashida Siddiq, Hamza Hussein, Munira Shamsuddin, Badia Muhammad, Yata Shabazz, Zahra Arsala, Zain Rahman, Maria Khan, Asma Rabu, Sihnaz Makati, Al Haja Taiwu, and Zarar Chowdhury. I hope I didn't mispronounce your names. These are amazing individuals who helped get 10 people to donate $10 on a specific day of Ramadan, and some of them got people to donate much more. And because of that, their name is in the hat. And if you want to be a part of our next contest, we have a few more. We have a few more. And it's as simple as getting 10 friends to donate $10 on certain days in Ramadan. That helps us to win some big prizes from Launch Good. If you think you can convince 10 people to donate $10 to Celebrate Mercy in, in Ramadan, join our next contest, and your name could be in the hat to win an Umrah trip, inshallah. So let us go ahead, if Sister Noor, you can show the list of names. 
It's going to be a list of names on a wheel. Uh, go ahead and share your screen, inshallah, and we will spin the wheel and see which person will win that trip to Jerusalem and Mecca and Medina, uh, inshallah. Uh, and we also are going to select one person to win a $1,000 cash prize, inshallah. So I think there's a way, yeah, you can full screen that and um, let's go ahead. Yes. Yes, perfect. And uh, everyone, let's recite the Fatiha. May Allah grant uh, whatever is best to these individuals, inshallah. Um, actually, we need to come back because there's a mistake, I think. Uh, actually, is there a mistake? I want to make sure. Noor, just let me know. You, we have the names repeated for certain individuals, correct? I believe there is. I have to put the names in 33, like the number of okay, okay. So so we will come back and show. Okay, I don't want to be unfair to those who got more names in the hat than, than one name, inshallah. Some of them have names repeated. I don't want to make a mistake with the raffle here because that could be bad. Um, so what we'll do is let's have the recitation of these names, inshallah, with our dear brother Sinan Hafiz. And then after that, I know those who are in the contest have been patiently waiting. Inshallah, please uh, sacrifice. <laughs> we talked about sacrifice. Sacrifice your time a little bit more so that we can uh, properly have the names repeated on the wheel. And we will do two raffles right after this uh, recitation of the names. So we will correct that. I didn't want to spin the wheel if it, was, if it had any mistakes in it, subhanAllah. So let me now introduce our dear... Uh, brother uh, Sinan Hafiz. And these are just a couple of pictures here, by the way. Uh, let me show my screen again. Pictures from the Umrah trips of Celebrate Mercy as well. This is These are the trips we take, uh, inshallah, uh, with our groups, uh, subhanAllah. So let me uh, introduce uh, our dear brother Sinan Hafiz. And everyone, inshallah, I hope your families are gathered uh, as we recite these names. And it will include some salawats upon the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Close your eyes. Think about the sacrifices that these individuals made. On this list of names, there are actually, I think, about 380 names because there are some uh, differences of opinion about whether certain individuals were there at Bedr or not. So there's a difference of opinion on the exact number of people and the names of the people. So we have them all included here. So hopefully they're all covered on this list of about, this is about 380 names. Uh, uh, because some names that are disputed are even on this list, because we don't want to miss any of the, those at Bedr, inshallah. Sinan Hafiz was born and raised in the UAE. He's been in love with the Quran and singing about the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, since he was four years old. He enjoys reciting the Quran and spreading the recitation, praying for the hearts to soften by the words of Allah. He holds a master's in business administration. He currently works in a cancer and uh, life sciences uh, lab as an implementation manager. I think that's actually not correct. Uh, let me let me share it because he he changed uh, his uh, occupation recently. Uh, so let me share what that is. Yes, now he is currently a project manager, senior project manager in the pharma and biotech industry. Uh, mashallah. So we are now going to bring to the stage our dear brother uh, Sinan Hafiz, um, and we're going to recite the names of. These uh, Bedris, when we say Bedris, may Allah make us the Bedris of our time. Uh, Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We're talking about those at Bedr, inshallah. And uh, may we be with them on the Day of Judgment, inshallah. Amin. Amin. It's great to have you with us, Sidi. And uh, you can go ahead and begin now. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin al-Nabi al-Ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim Allahumma arda an asyadina أبي بن كعب الأخنس بن خبيب الأرقم بن أبي الأرقم أسعد بن يزيد أنس بن معاذ أنسة مولى النبي محمد أنيس بن قتادة أو سبن ثابت أو سبن خولي أو سبن الصامت يا سبن أوس يا سبن البكير بجير بن أبي بجير بحاث بن ثعلبة بسبسة بن عمر بشر بن البراء بشير بن سعد بلال بن رباح تميم بن يعار تميم مولى غنم ابن السلم اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا 
تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا تميم مولا خراش ثابت بن أقرم ثابت بن ثعلب ثابت بن خالد ثابت بن خنساء ثابت بن عمرو ثابت بن هزال ثعلبة بن حاطب ثعلبة بن عمرو ثعلبة بن عنمة ثقف بن عمرو جابر بن خالد جابر بن عبد الله جابر بن صخر جبر بن عتيك جبير بن إياس الحارث بن أنس بن مالك الحارث بن أوس بن رافع الحارث بن أوس بن معاذ الحارث بن حاطب اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا الحارث بن خزمة الخزرجي الحارث بن خزمة الأوسي الحارث بن خدن أبي خزمة الحارث بن الصمة الحارث بن عرفجة الحارث بن قيس الأوسي الحارث بن قيس الخزرجي الحارث بن النعمان حارثة بن سراقة حارثة بن النعمان حاطب بن أبي بلتع حاطب بن عمر الحباب بن المنذر حب حبيب بن الأسود حريث بن زيد الحصين بن الحارث حمزة بن الحمير حمزة بن عبد المطلب خارجة بن الحمير خارجة بن زيد اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن بالجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا خالد بن البكير خالد بن قيس خباب بن الأرد خباب مولى عتبة خبيب بن إساف خبيب بن عدي خداش بن قتادة خراش بن الصمة خريم بن فاتك خلاد بن رافع خلاد بن سويد خلاد بن عمر خلاد بن قيس خليد بن قيس خليفة بن عدي خنيس بن حذافة خوات بن جبير خولي بن أبي خولي ذكوان بن عبد قيس ذكوان بن سعد اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا ذو الشمالين ابن عبد عمرو راشد بن المعلى رافع بن الحارث رافع بن المعلى رافع بن عنجدة رافع بن مالك رافع بن يزيد رب ربعي بن رافع الربيع بن إياس ربيعة بن أكثم رخيلة بن ثعلبة رفاعة بن الحارث رفاعة بن رافع رفاعة بن عبد المنذر رفاعة بن عمرو خزياد بن السكن زياد بن عمرو زياد بن لبيد زيد بن أسلم زيد بن حارثة اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي 
من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا زيد بن الخطاب زيد بن المزين زيد بن المعلى زيد بن وديعة سالم بن عمير سالم مولى أبي حذيفة السائم بن عثبان بن مضعون سبرة بن فاتك سبيع بن قيس سراقة بن, م... سراقة بن عمر سراقة بن كعب سعد بن خولة سعد بن خيثمة سعد بن الربيع سعد بن زيد سعد بن سعد سعيد سعد بن سهيل سعد بن عبادة سعد بن عبيد سعد بن عثمان اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا سعد بن معاذ سعد بن سعد مولى حاطب سفيان بن بشر سلمة بن أسلم سلمة بن ثابت سلمة بن سلامة سليط بن قيس سليم بن سليم بن الحارث سليم بن عمرو سليم بن قيس سليم بن بن مليحان سماك بن سعد سنان بن صيفي سنان بن أبي سنان سهل بن حنيف سهل بن رافع سهل بن عتيك سهل بن قيس سهيل بن رافع سهيل بن وهب اللهم ارضى عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله اللهم ارضى عن اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا سواد بن رزن سواد بن غزية سويبط بن حرملة شجاع بن وهب شريك بن أنيس شماس بن عثبان صبيح مولى العاصي صفوان بن وهب صهيب بن سنان صيفي بن سواد الضحاك بن حارثة الضحاك بن عمر ضمر ضمرة بن عمر الطفيل بن الحارث الطفيل بن مال الطفيل بن النعمان طليب بن عمير طلحة بن عبيد الله عاصم بن ثابت عاصم بن عدي اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عاصم بن البكير عاصم بن قيس عاقل بن البكير عامر بن أمية عامر بن البكير عامر بن ربيعة عامر بن سعد عامر بن سلمة عامر بن فهيرة عامر بن مخلد عائد بن ماعص عباد بن باش عباد بن بشر عباد بن الخشخش عباد بن قيس بن عامر عباد بن قيس بن عائشة عبادة بن الصامت عبد الله بن ثعلبة عبد الله بن جبير عبد الله بن جحش عبد الله بن الجد اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن 
في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عبد الله بن الحمير عبد الله بن الربيع عبد الله بن رواحة عبد الله بن زيد عبد الله بن سراقة عبد الله بن سلمة عبد الله بن سهل عبد الله بن سهيل عبد الله بن شريك عبد الله بن طارق عبد الله بن عامر عبد الله بن عبد الله عبد الله بن مناف عبد الله بن عبس عبد الله بن عرفطة عبد الله بن عمر عبد الله بن عمير عبد الله بن قيس بن خلدة عبد الله بن قيس بن صخر عبد الله بن كعب اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عبد الله بن مخرمة عبد الله بن مسعود عبد الله بن مضعون عبد الله بن النعمان عبد عبد الرحمن بن جبر عبد عبد رب بن حق عبد عبس بن عامر عبيد بن أوس عبيد بن التيهان عبيد بن زيد عبيد بن أبي عبيد عبيدة بن الحارث عتبان بن مالك عتبة بن ربيعة عتبة بن عبد الله عتبة بن غزوان عثمان بن مضعون العجلان بن النعمان عدي بن أبي الزغباء عصمة بن الحصين اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عصيمة الأشجعي عطية بن نويرة عقبة بن عامر عقبة بن عثمان عقبة بن وهب الأنصاري عقبة بن وهب المهاجر عكاشة بن محصن عمار بن ياسر عمارة, عم عمارة بن حزم عمارة بن زيد عصيمة الأشجعي عطية بن نويرة عقبة بن عامر عقبة بن عثمان عقبة بن وهب الأنصاري عقبة بن وهب المهاجر عكاشة بن محصن عمار بن ياسر عمار بن حزم عمار عمارة بن حزم عمارة بن زياد اللهم صل وس اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا عمرو بن إياس عمرو بن ثعلبة عمرو بن الجموح عمرو بن الحارث المهاجر عمرو بن الحارث الأنصاري عمرو بن سراقة عمرو بن أبي سرح عمرو بن طلق عمرو بن عوف عمرو بن قيس عمرو بن معاذ عمرو بن معبد عمير بن حرام عمير بن الحمام عمير بن عامر عمير بن أبي وقاص عنترة مولى سليم عوف بن الحارث عويم بن ساعدة عياض بن زهير اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن 
في الجنان مقيما اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا غنام بن أوس الفاكة بن بشر فروة بن عمر قتاتة بن النعمان قدامة بن مظعون قطبة بن عامر قيس بن السكن قيس بن عمر قيس بن محصن قيس بن مخلد كعب بن جمار كعب بن زيد لبدة بن قيس مالك بن الدخشم مالك بن ربيعة مالك بن رفاعة مالك بن عمر مالك بن قدامة مالك بن قدامة مالك بن مسعود مالك بن نميلة اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا مالك بن أبي خولا مبشر بن عبد المنذر مبشر بن عبد المنذر المجد المجذر بن زياد محرز بن عامر محرز بن نضلة محمد بن سب محمد بن مسلمة مدلاج بن عمر مرارة بن الربيع مرفد بن أبي مرفد مسطح بن أثاثة مسعود بن أوس مسعود بن خلدة مسعود بن ربيعة مسعود بن زيد مسعود بن سعد مسعود بن عبد سعد مصعب بن عمير مظهر بن رافع معاذ بن جبل معاذ بن الحارث اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا معاذ بن الصمة معاذ بن عم معاذ بن ماعس معبد بن عباد معبد بن قيس معتب بن عبيد معتب معتب بن عوف معتب بن قشير معقل بن المنذر معمر بن الحارف معمر بن الحارف معن بن عدي معن بن يزيد معوذ بن الحارف معوذ بن عمر المقداد بن الأسود مليل بن وبره المنذر بن عمر المنذر بن قدامة المنذر بن محمد مهجع بن صالح اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا نصر بن الحارث النعمان بن الأعرج النعمان بن سنان نعمان بن عصر نعمان بن عمر نعما النعمان بن عبد عمر النعمان بن مالك النعمان بن أبي خزامة نعيمان بن عمر نوفل بن عبيد الله هانئ بن نيار مبيل بن وبرة هلال بن أمية هلال بن المعلى واقد بن عبد الله وديعة بن عمر ورقة بن إياس وهب بن سعد يزيد بن الأخنس يزيد بن الحارث اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا يزيد بن حرام يزيد بن رقيش يزيد بن السكن يزيد بن المنذر أبو الأسوار 
أبو أيوب الأنصاري أبو حبة بن عبد ثابت أبو حبيب بن زيد أبو حذيفة بن عتبة أبو الأبو حسن الأنصاري أبو الحمراء أبو حنة بن مالك أبو خارجة أبو خزيمة أبو خلاد أبو داود أبو دجانة أبو سبرة أبو سلمة أبو سليط اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا أبو سنان أبو شيخ بن أبي ثابت أبو صرمة أبو ضياح أبو طلحة أبو عبس أبو عقيل أبو قتادة أبو قيس أبو كبشة أبو لبابة أبو مخشي أبو مرفد أبو مسع أبو مسعود البدري أبو مليل أبو المنذر أبو الهيثم أبو اليسر اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن أسيادنا طلحة بن عبيد الله الزبير بن العوام عبد الرحمن بن عوف سعد بن أبي وقاص سعد بن زيد أبو عبيدة بن الجراح اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما حتى تنالوا جنة ونعيما الله يجزي من يصلي مرة عشرا ويسكن في الجنان مقيما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ارض عن سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب سيدنا عثمان بن عفان سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب سيدنا أبو بكر الصديق اللهم ارض عنهم واجزهم عنا خير الجزاء اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا وقدوتنا وقائدنا وطبيبنا ومصطفانا سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان الله جزاكم الله خير سيدي uh, that was so so beautiful we're getting so many comments so many amins and I pray, I pray that inshallah you will be uh, with them inshallah on the day of judgment. Amen. Amen. Allahumma amen. Barakallahu fikum. Jazakum Allahu khaira. Wa iyaakum sidi. Take care and uh, hopefully we'll see you again very soon. Inshallah. Barakallahu fikum. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum as salam. Um, that was our dear brother Sinan Hafiz. I think we have some comments about his recitation, subhanAllah. And we were supposed to have also uh, brother Moaz and Nas with us. But unfortunately, he's traveling overseas, and we felt like it might be too risky with his internet connection not being that great. 
So Alhamdulillah, Brother Sinan, on a very short notice, basically a one-day notice, um, he uh, committed to join us and do this recitation with us. And uh, may Allah reward him and, uh, and bless him. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. So um, we are now, uh, after a long delay, we are going to select the winners of the Umrah trip and the winners of a couple of other big prizes as well. Uh, inshallah, um, these are the qualifiers for our second contest. Let me pull up the, uh, the flyer here. And inshallah, uh, uh, Sister Noor, uh, Jemmy, you can go ahead and bring up the wheel. Wow, it's a big wheel now um, of names, inshallah. And we will, uh, all of us, this is, this, is the, this is the group of individuals who uh, qualified in the second contest, and you can learn more about these contests at celebratemercy.com slash contest. And maybe, just maybe, the person who wins will be able to show up on stage uh, to, uh, to, we'll see the reaction of the person who wins this contest. I don't know if there's a way, Noor, to zoom in a little bit more, but if not, that's okay, uh, to zoom in on the wheel. Let me see here. Um, okay, yeah, that, that's pretty good. Okay, let's go ahead, inshallah, and see who will win this free trip to Mecca and Medina, inshallah. Ooh, don't look at it too closely or it might make you dizzy. Wow, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. The winner, the winner is Lena Kasim, although the ticker was about to go past Lena's name, but it did not. SubhanAllah, I saw that. Uh, and you can you can click on remove all instances, uh, inshallah, for that one. I don't know if we have Lena backstage, uh, Danielle, if Lena's around. Is Lena able to join us? I thought she might be backstage already, um, but I would love to see her uh, reaction. If Lena, you can join us here on StreamYard backstage. And in the meantime, Noor, why don't... Oh, I think. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum assalam. Congratulations, congratulations on Thank winning you. the Umrah trip. Thank you. I'm so excited. Jazakumullah khairan. This is really exciting. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I don't know if you've been to Umrah before, uh, but I, uh, you know, I, I know some people are saying I know how she feels right now, but you, uh, you were at the top of the list, Sapala, for the second time in a row. The person who had the most points now has won, although before that, usually the person at the top never <laughs> never wins, so it's, it's just happened that way. But this year, the person at the top has been uh, winning two times in a row, subhanAllah, but you really put in a huge amount of effort. Maybe Danielle, you can remind me like uh, how many points she got. She got so many people to donate on prize day, um, and we're really, really uh, grateful to you for all your efforts. Jazakumullah khairan. Jazakumullah khairan for um... Brother Tariq, Brother um, Faisal, Sister Danielle, and all the uh, Celebrate Mercy staff. And of course, um, I wasn't able to do it without, of course, Allah's help and mercy and love. Mm -hmm. and, um, I have such so much support for my family, friends, and community. And alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. and well, you were, yeah, you, you got a lot of people to donate on that day. And through your efforts, mashallah, we, we raised you know a lot more money for the fundraiser we're doing. And inshallah, that will all be for everyone who participated in the contest, inshallah, it will be on their scale, good deeds, and inshallah, sadaqa jariyah as well. That's the real prize. The real prize is that your efforts are helping kids and adults to learn about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And I think the entire group of contestants raised uh, over $7,000, but from you alone, your efforts raised about 2,000, more than 2,000. So you, you had over 85 people donate through your efforts, which was amazing. It's really, really amazing. So... Thank you so much, Sister Lina. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much again. Jazakallah khair to you too. Thank you so much. And um, we'll go ahead and, and show the wheel one more time, Noor, uh, because we have one more big prize of, it's the $1,000 cash prize. And then we have other prizes that they're going to win as well, but we'll spin the wheel uh, after the program for that. So Noor, can we bring that wheel back to the stage? And let's select one more person here who's going to win $1,000 cash. Maybe they'll use it to go on Umrah with Celebrate Mercy. We'll see. Okay, so this is for the $1,000 cash prize uh, as part of this. And Lena's name is not on the wheel here. So we have Maryam Khaled. Maryam Khaled, mashallah. Maryam Khaled, mashallah. Who, uh, who has won a $1,000 cash prize 
mashallah for you know all the efforts and for all these contestants like i said allah rewards by intentions you had an intention to go to umrah you had an intention to uh you know help celebrate mercy and you will be rewarded for that intention uh, inshallah so really really want to thank i don't know if maryam khalid is da danielle is maryam going to be able to join us uh i don't know but in the meantime i think noor you have another wheel of those who were sharing with the hashtag inshallah um and so we can select people to win and i want to show you guys what you're going to win exactly we're going to give away uh two of these wooden sandals two of these wooden sandals let me show my slides here um so the wooden sandal that you see behind me on my wall right here um these uh sell for four hundred dollars uh three foot tall wooden sandal it's it's uh shaped in the shape of the the bottom of the prophet muhammad's sandal subhanallah look at what <laughs> maham is saying 85 people i don't even know 85 people <laughs> subhanallah so how did lena get 85 people to donate that was it's a big effort but don't forget the minimum that you have to do is get 10 people to donate 10 people to donate 10 dollars. so you don't need to get 85 but she really went way above and beyond mashallah way above and beyond mashallah um so jazakumallah khair to sister lena um, let's see who's going to win this first wooden sandal, inshallah, before we close out the program. Okay, and the winner of the first one is this Instagram handle, which is Zayra, Zayra, Z-A-I-Y-R-E-H. Message us on Instagram or email us so we can get you this wooden sandal. Thank you for sharing that hashtag, mashallah. Who else is gonna win this $400 wooden sandal, inshallah? Yes, someone's asking about the link to donate. The link is there scrolling on the bottom of your screen. It's launchgood.com slash CM. Oh, is it gonna go to Asra? Oh, it did, okay. So the winner here is Azra Baig. Azra Baig, who I know her personally, she's based here in New Jersey. Uh, Sister Azra, you just won, mashallah, this $400 wooden sandal, mashallah. Um, I don't know, Danielle, is Miriam? is Miriam? Yeah, okay, Miriam has not responded, the one who won the $1,000 cash. Is Zane, or is Zane here? No, okay. Okay, great. So this, this beautiful art piece is gonna go to those two individuals, Zaira and um, uh, Azra Baig. So message us so we can send you this to your address, uh, inshallah. So it says, yeah, Miriam cannot come on the one who won the $1,000 effort, but she had a she has something to share here. Jazakallah khair to everyone at Celebrate Mercy for allowing this opportunity. May Allah bless all your efforts. May Allah bless everyone who helped with this fundraiser, Amin. And don't forget, don't forget that you can join the next contest. We actually have a contest that's starting very soon. And again, it's as simple as getting 10 people to donate $10, inshallah, and then you can join, uh, You can, your name will be in the hat to potentially win a trip to Jerusalem and Umrah with Celebrate Mercy. Uh, thank you all for joining. If you missed any part of this program, you can go back to watch the recording, inshallah. We also wanna remind you, this is the link to donate. We did hit the $20,000 goal for today's webinar. I think we're now at 20% of our goal, but 20% is still 80% away from where we need to be. We're still 80% of the way from our Ramadan goal. Uh, inshallah and even from what we raised we're probably like 75 percent of the way from what we raised last year so we still have a lot more fundraising to do but we hope you'll consider donating we hope you'll share the recording for this webinar especially because for some of you this is not your 17th day of ramadan yet it's not your 17th night of ramadan so i think many people will be watching the recording of this program and hopefully those who are watching all of you will donate at least a little bit to help us get closer to our Ramadan goal. So we're now gonna jump into the next webinar because we have five webinars today, five webinars today. So we're gonna jump into the next one now, which is the uh, Quran recitation at 5 p.m. with Sheikh Abdullah Deeb, uh, inshallah. And then we have, uh, inshallah, the, um, we have uh, the kids program coming up later on in the program, uh, later on today at 6.45, the kids program at 6.45 p.m. So I hope, all of you with kids, at least, or even adults, you can join and benefit from the kids program. will join this uh, this beautiful, uh, inshallah. Um, mashallah. Thank you to Sister Naima, who said that she donated just now. 
wonderful session. Masha'Allah. Um, Jazakallah khair to, to you, Sister Naima. Um, uh, uh, Maham is saying, if I got the $1,000, I would give it back to Celebrate Mercy because this lecture has been incredible. Uh, inshallah. Everyone is free to do what they want with the prizes, inshallah. Some do donate it, some don't. It's okay, inshallah. But they deserve that, that, that victory, that win, inshallah. And thank you to all the contestants. You will be rewarded for your intention and you will be rewarded for the Salaq al and you helped more people to learn about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Jazakallah khair to everyone. We'll see you in the next program. Keep us in your prayers. Keep the Celebrate Mercy team in your prayers, inshallah. They worked very, very hard to bring you this webinar and all these webinars, mashallah. Uh, we have um, about 200 different webinars. Uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah, 430. Yeah, we actually have uh, about 200 webinars that we're doing in Ramadan by itself. Takes a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifice. Keep them in your prayers, the Celebrate Mercy team, and keep us in your dua, keep us in your donations. And Jazakum Allah Khair, we'll see you next time. Hopefully you've clicked on the like button already and subscribed as well on YouTube. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.